Welcome to the Apex Legends Global Series. Today is match day five in NA. And like we said during EMEA, that means after today, we will be at the halfway point of the season. Now, it is the second time that these two groups will face off against each other. And with the action we saw last time around, and earlier today, I can't wait to see what all of these teams are bringing to the table. I'm your host, Glitter Explosion, and of course, we've got to bring our amazing casters back on into the fray. Spider Tip, we've got big names in the lobby today, so how are you feeling about A versus C? Ooh, I'm feeling so good, Glitter. To be honest, Amia was an absolute joy to cast over, but I'm more excited for North America because what can happen? We saw Aurora kind of double down and win that series of A and C again, but who knows what's going to happen for NA. Luminosity showed out the last time we saw them. Can they do it again? But for our other players, I guess it's time to say, leave it at the door and come to work. Iron out those medals and we'll see what happens. I think that's some quality advice. Tiff, that was perfect. And of course, we've got Zephyr as well. First of all, Zephyr, do you have any puns ready this time around? And two, how excited are you for today's matches? I'll tell you what, I, I suppose I'm a bit punless when we come into at least today's intro, but I'm just as excited as I was on Amia here. Like Tiff was saying, Luminosity reigns head, and we've had a lot of repeats, but things are constantly ever shifting in North America, especially after we just saw Oxygen with their performance in our most recent match day. So for some of the rest of our other teams who are maybe straggling behind as we approach that halfway point, it's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It, it, we did it. We got you. You said it. OK, well, you know what? He's not wrong. That is a factual statement. And we have lots of things to talk about here today. So let's just start those conversations by taking a look at our overall standings to see where our teams currently reside. And this was a conversation we started earlier in the EMEA region tip, but it might feel a little bit early. It's not. These teams need to start thinking about where they are on the leaderboard. Yep, that's true. In EMEA, we were starting to talk about what was at stake to get on that threshold to qualify for split one playoffs. And as I look at this first page, being in the top 10 is great because 12 will advance on to the split one playoffs. Dark Zero is just really leading the charge here. Now, granted, you won't see them today, but Luminosity, look, they have pretty much locked it in. I would honestly go all the way down and say, barring any crazy thing happening, Elevate Gaming and even Oxygen Esports have a shot to make this locked in. And I'm keeping my eyes on Oxygen. Yeah, it's definitely a very top heavy region right now, taking a look at this leaderboard. But when we move down to the second page, these are all the teams fighting to make it up into that first one. And we've got big names here, Zephyr. And it's funny that you say the word fighting, because especially as we've now expanded the amount of slots that exist for North America going into playoffs, there is still kind of a depth to this cutoff that extends all the way down to 12 and more. Of course, as we look at some of these names, I'm looking for a resurgence between Optic and GKS, especially after recent performance, but for teams like Disguise, who showed out and showed up at our most recent championship and many others. And then, of course, to finalize everything, we have the last page. And the trend kind of continues. Some big recognizable names on here from teams that we've seen have insane performances in seasons past. So we'll have to see what they're able to do to kind of propel themselves up the leaderboard. Keeping in mind, though, that a lot of them have only played two series, looking at pretty much anything from 22nd through 24th. So there's still time and opportunity, especially today, for these teams to really bring something to the table. But now that you know where all of our teams stand, we'll take a look at our participants for today. Like we said earlier, it is groups A and C going head to head here, Tiff. Which one stands out for you? Ooh, this is going to be tough. Of course, we have to think about the contest that will be going down. Skirt moving on over for World's Edge to challenge Oblivion on Landslide. But Skirt, you know, after leaving Lava Fissure, going up against Luminosity and then electing to move, they've kind of traversed the realm of World's Edge. So will Mac and co finally lock it together in Landslide? But we'll have to get through Stormpoint to see that first. And of course, I want to shout out Meat Lovers that are going to be playing today because Dia is a huge fan of Tech and co. So hopefully they can keep it consistent. I love that, giving a little bit of love to Dia as well. Now, Zephyr, who are you keeping your eyes on? 
my big one on the board is definitely Furia here, and I feel like they've gotten some attention, but at least for me, their performance in day two where they topped out in terms of damage and came through on the differential as well is something that only bodes what could potentially be an explosive day for this roster. And on top of that, I want to give a big shout out to Game and Gladiators kind of jumping now into the North American fray, uh, picking up flat here in Group A. All right, now let's start talking about some of these teams because, Tiff, you mentioned it earlier when we were looking at the overall standings. One of the teams that did phenomenally last time around was OXG. So talk to me about them a little bit. Oh, Oxygen, man. They've had a tough journey at the start of the regular season for Split 1. They eventually leave their home of Barometer on Storm Point and dare I say, have very lackluster performances to kick things off. I believe they got 11 points on match day one, maybe five on match day two, but they know, they tweet out, they go, we're going back to Barometer. And they return on that A and B throughout that second round robin. And you know what? It pays dividends. They get the overall win on the day, even with a game going so far, back-to-back -back wins and map three and four, 14 eliminations on that second one. So the things that we have to really start gearing up for, especially for today, is the fact that they were not contested on Barometer throughout that prior match day. They have to go up against Nine Lies Esports at Barometer to kick things off. And, you know, I was tuning into Minus Tempo's uh, stream. He was kind of chatting a little bit ahead of this map series. And he was like, dude, the, the contest has been really consistent, right? So Nine Lies are putting up a fight. They do not want to leave Barometer. So the boys, you look, maybe you can chow the BR Demons. Maybe you can. All right. Well, obviously, that was a team that's doing really, really well for themselves. We also saw these next squads on our overall leaderboard, maybe in a more surprising spot than what we would have initially anticipated for some of them. We're calling them the Sleeping Giants, and there are three of them. We have to touch on this here. Okay, we've got Legacy, Sentinels, and Exit. Zephyr, I want you to start me off with Legacy. Oh, Legacy. It, it feels like one of the most dramatic falls of maybe any one of these three here. Fifth in the championship now into a position where they are just a point above relegation. You can check out that stat line. And something I will note is that it has improved, especially on the world's edge for them, where they kind of find themselves away from the current contest against Moist, with most recently their highest placement yet in fourth. Now, if you're a huge Legacy fan, I do want to let you know, though, that this is a team that has seen this before. When we talk about the previous split for Legacy, they actually started the first two match days off worse with less points than they currently have now in our overall. So definitely sleeping, but ready to wake up. That's a good point there, Zephyr, but I'm going to go ahead and turn my attention to the sleeping giant of Sentinels. Now, I'm a big Alex fan over there, the analyst for Sentinels, that roster of RKN, Oriolis, and Zenial. Uh, I don't know why that name was trying to slip by me here. We got some split one statistics for them, and over the course of 12 matches, they've accumulated 29 eliminations, but the average is 2.42 per map, and that placement, though, is that 10th place threshold. And when I spoke to Alex, he is basically just saying, let me cook. Just give me a second and may the zones be ever in our favor. Now, granted, they were in 18th place on the prior showing for A and C, and I feel like they have nothing to lose here, and their only trajectory is to go up, and I expect them to wake up here today. Absolutely. And then, of course, the final sleeping giant is Xset. We couldn't not talk about Xset, the roster of Nocturnal Fun and Koifel, a team that we've literally watched dominate the region in seasons past. Someone we know that can have insane performances, and they're just not there yet. Now, to be fair, Xset's only played twice so far. So that's definitely impacting where they are on that leaderboard. But we're also just not getting the performances out of them that we are used to. When they do perform well, they're also slaying out while getting those placement points on the board. But they're just kind of taking a little bit of time to warm up, okay? And I think one of those things that 
will assist in that process of really picking up their performance here is the new addition of Koifel to the roster. We can't not speak about him. Obviously, only a couple of play days under his belt, but already from day to day, we are seeing improvements. One of the youngest controller players we have in ALGS right now, I mean, he has massive expectations on his shoulders combined with the expectations that we already had of Xset in general. So you can just see how there's promise there. I mean, 5K damage on match day three with just those eight kills, that's something that they can absolutely work with. And you know Nocturnal is going to be doing his best to nail down that team synergy and make sure that it all works together. Now, obviously, if we're talking about Exit, we couldn't not talk about Hotsick as well. So we got an opportunity to catch up with Hotsick before all of this, first of all, to get his thoughts on the new addition of Koifel to the roster, but also what their game plan is heading into the rest of the season. Hey guys, this is Exit Hotsick. Um, I'm the coach and my players are Nocturnal, Fun, and Koifel. It's been a bit it's frustrating because this is the third player in three years that we've had to work with. Uh, so, you know, we, it's it's nothing we haven't faced before, but he's been... I was a little worried going into it because, you know, he is only 17. He's still in school and all that. Um, but it's, it's honestly been really, really refreshing. I mean, he's been a huge breath of fresh air to the team. He's been really fun to work with. And he is a, he's a really, really smart kid with a really good head on his shoulders. I mean, he's, he, you know... Oftentimes you worry about people being a little bit too, uh, I guess, like childish when you haven't had that much, like, you know, adult life experience. But he's not, nah, he's, you wouldn't guess that he's 17 with how mature he is. So he's been really fun to have on the team so far. Um, I mean, our goal is simply, obviously, to make land, right? We've never been in this situation. We've always done really well in Pro League. But um, basically, I, I feel like we're just learning or going through the growing pains of, uh, you know, a new third this time around. We got off to a huge start with Koi. Uh, we were winning everything, but then I feel like only now we're starting to learn what it's like to be as a team. The, the honeymoon phase is worn off, and we are working together through all of our problems, but I think we'll hopefully come out through it on the other end uh, much stronger than, than we started. I love that. I think that was kind of one of the questions that we had. We heard him talking about how Koiful is a new third, that they have to keep kind of going back and working with new thirds, but that there is just so much potential that HOD6 sees for once they have really nailed their their entire team synergy down, Tiff, they might be unstoppable. They might be. Now, granted, I've definitely watched a lot of their POVs, whether it be scrims, and granted, scrims are not like ALGS match days, but one thing that I do look at is the rotations when it comes towards getting into those next zones, and a lot of the pacing issues has been tough, and when I say pacing issues, it's just the rotations in general. Everyone and their brother has a 30-30 out there on Stormpoint and World's Edge, and you just constantly have to make sure that you are finding cover, if any, on Stormpoint throughout those rotations, and that's where I've noticed a lot of difficulties. I mean, I'm talking rogue frag grenades just knocking fun right out of the mix. So that's, in my opinion, rotating from Cascades to, like, the more southern zones. You'd think that would be, you know, they have half the distance to cover it, but it's been really challenging. So hopefully they continue to bounce back, and that's what I'm keeping my eyes on. Well, it'll be exciting to see what they can do heading into today because match number one is almost ready to go, which means it's time for you two to kick into it. I can't wait. Ooh, me neither. And we're kicking things off on Stormport. I'd love to go ahead and pull up those map rotations, Zephyr, because we have a lot to talk about. And I know we have some really cool things to share with the community. But Zephyr, I just need to hit it. We always talk about predictions in general. Tell me who you think's going to win our map one while we look at this. Ooh, deep into the I map know. one guess already here. You know what? I'm going to say it's disguised out of nowhere. <laughs> Underdog story, a team that's been on their train of improvement, and of course, taking licks from us early on in the broadcast. We'll see if they can come through and deliver. I, I do love that, but yeah, we are going to be kicking things off on Storm Point, similar to how we did in EMEA. Then we'll be kicking off our back half of the map series with the coveted tried and true World's Edge. But let's go ahead and look at the prior match day circles for North America. Now, this has been the biggest question. A lot of people talking, will we see Northern Zones on Storm Point? Well, you did on match day one. You got the one just by north of Black Diamond on the outskirts of Zeus Station. 
We are able to grab a southern mill zone and even a tidbit of bamboo forest over barometer. But as you look towards match day two, they were all north, Zephyr. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, especially in the proximity to the wall as a whole here, which kind of gives way to the impact of what we saw to teams like Luminosity, right? Who got to have some of the first takes to areas like that. And so potentially now with further rotations out in a way, we might see some deeper impacts from some of our other squads, but it'll start off with some fighting early on here. Barometer, we've already discussed the Nine Lies Oxygen Contest. And of course, Legacy V Moist, still trying to see if our giant will arise. Who will leave? Will Legacy vacate, maybe take Millage, maybe bump on over to Devastated Coast? And even Minus Tempo himself was saying, keep an eye on Tech over there at Launchpad, because sometimes he'll drop down and grab the Trident North, take it back to Launchpad, maybe look for some engagements. But honestly, drop in gaming, being able to acquire 36 points alone from the first three maps of Stormpoint on the prior match day meeting, and even LG from Zeus Station really bolstering their scoreline from those Northern zones yeah one big kind of outlier here i will point out is dno down there by the coastal camp and you'll notice that the majority of their point score picked up in that first game alone they're coming out on top with 21 of their 27 points there so even still with the extension all the way north they'll face their difficulties Difficulties aside, it's time to get into the dropship for map number one. Will we see more northern storm point zones for our North American region, similar to match day number two, or will we head elsewhere? Time is only going to tell us more, Zephyr, but I could not be more excited to see how some of these contests start to pan out. More importantly, over at Echo HQ. Now, the very last thing I want to see here is potentially some predictions from you, but this contest might be something that we weren't predicting. Ooh, Potentially not. this is tippable. Interesting. It looks like they're actually going to move on over to Devastated Coast for Legacy, but the battle for Barometer is still happening. You see Oxygen, Aiden, Vane, and Reeds taking that center spire. Aiden already grabbing himself a purple shield before they start to loot up. And honestly, an R301 Rampage is not a bad shot here but we're gonna swap it out for the nemesis even more typical there for vein now something i've noticed from both of these contests is the delay of action has increased over time here especially in regards to our previous match days where we have seen these teams meet up for oxygen extending as far as to the south here to delay this rotation even in their struggles and potentially what could be further action to get out of dodge here in barometer is something we'll have to wait and see aiden though posturing on the other side potentially says otherwise. It'd be really interesting, and I would respect it if they decided to go ahead and just split barometer. As you can see, you could get a good look of that initial zone and where we're heading. For gaming gladiators, getting that kind of new org buff, the zone centering over pylon, but it does intersect kind of toward the southern area of coastal camp where DNO gaming is. So I'd imagine that we will bounce back even further south. Mm. Yeah, kind of up towards that hillside can be something of a, a potential play here for those chokes. And for DNO, Oxygen, and None Lies, this is definitely one of the harder zones to have an early take towards, but they will be the ones that hold the most impact here. Expect them to be potentially playing more outskirt-wise on the kind of cusps of getting into our round two rather than directly playing towards it. But for oversleepers who land over at command center, they grab the evac tower at the top of command and cover so much ground heading towards the south, allowing them to get all the way to pylon just on the outskirts to continue that looting pattern that they're working on. But honestly, something that's really interesting is, yes, we see a lot of people electing to play the vault over in the EMEA region, but the accuracy for the players was higher on the R9 than it was for the vault. Oh, I, I believe it in a heartbeat. You can't break practice, and especially with the Volt being in that package only miles ago, which kind of dissuaded teams from picking up into its return, where it was still worse than the 99. Kind of bleeds into why the SMG doesn't have quite the hit to it, but meat lovers, they'll be taking that much more. For Legacy, not only do they not contest, they start turning their attention towards meat lovers and tech on the Bloodhound just has to run away. The power of Legacy is just too strong with them today. 
This is a solid start. It isn't the full white, but 2kp on the board on an early storm point is already so much better than what we have seen previously out of Legacy. Our mind folks at home, they started 20 and 0 when we talked about them last time around. Definitely looking for a stronger start, but we talked about the sleeping giants and sentinels on your screen will be one of them. Going for the bang catalyst. Watson, but tune it on over to Game and Gladiators. Just trying to hit this high ground. We've seen a lot of teams play specifically from this position. And with a lot of teams trying to play from this area, similar to how we witnessed in the EMEA region, things got really congested quick around that bridge. And I find it interesting, but I don't think it'll be something that stands for long here. The pylon, uh, much more of a happy place to be and how much it offers in terms of spacing two teams, given the proximity of how much covers there is and the buildings that present themselves here. So for our, I will say, Eastern rotating squads, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some shifts fairly early on. Some shifts early on will be Moist Esports taken towards the high ground here in devastated coast. Now, I love that they can shoot long distance here with those scopes to allow them for tech, though. They will be the first squad to fall on our map. Number one is Yanya, just pushes the equation and eliminates the meat lovers. Now, Zephyr, we always talk about like ring consoles, survey beacons, and a lot of people have said that they've run into a mess trying to predict zones off of the survey beacon from Bloodhounds because once you essentially get that survey beacon scan, if everyone's on the wrong side and you justify your rotation accordingly, could we see that happen here, especially with a lot of people congesting outside of pylon and essentially out of the second zone? Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, it spells itself out almost directly there for those three or four squads. That could potentially be enough, and especially with the zone catering more directly out into the open for our round two and further, you're not going to be seeing squads setting themselves up there. But granted, Bloodhound still a relatively niche pickup, even if it has its minor impacts towards some of our squads. Most teams still headset on that control of the Catalyst or even the Watson. It's really fun to see that. And even this morning in EMEA, we had a ton less conduits in the lobby than we typically had on a few match days prior. Fury here on the move, making their entrance over towards Pylon, which a few squads have already made their way in. Drop in gaming over sleepers, the ones coming That's in from the back tower from command center. And even LG, dare I say a very quick rotation for them, but the sleeping giant meets a Titan. Xset and TSM running amok here in Launchpad. See if they can put their way in before Xset makes their way out. Might already be dissuading the pressure by kind of leaving themselves quite a distance. How? Taking a huge chunk in return as a result. It's going to stop them from at least their first initial attack here. But for Xset, it doesn't get much better. We know there's a lot of these teams towards the eastern side bridge and more here. So making a rotation out from Red Room into the southern launch pad doesn't get easy. Oh, yeah, that's really going to be tough now that I think about it. I think Xset making the disengagement here and moving towards that choke point is going to be the preferential rotation for them. We'll eventually see Disguised at some point when they decide to come down from the north side, even Evolution kind of hitting a quick bit over at Sito. But the incoming next zone does come through, and we are still moving a little bit closer to DNO Gaming. Now, granted, they did get the majority of their points from their match series on Storm Point with that coveted win up by the Black Sands. This zone is pulling right to their wheelhouse. All right, if there's a team that knows how to deliver, it can be DNO. For Game and Gladiators, they finally have pushed to the correct position and taken, well, at least home of one of our Trapezoids, as I guess I shall call it here, looking for revives. This is still something that is susceptible to many nades, but Louis being up there on that catalyst will make sure that they can have uh, the defensible opportunity. The reset does come through, and as we see in the distance, Xset still trying to make their way in and now it looks like they're jockeying for position between sentinels another one of the sleeping giants that we highlighted throughout the rolling thunder does come through as knock fun and coy try to stabilize here on the inside looking for some damage and yeah knock tries to find an angle but unfortunately it's not going to manifest through that door the reinforcements on the other side from sentinels come through 
mind you, watch Orioles on this other end here. This makes it difficult for Sentinels to either pick a side because at the end of the day, it is a double 90 degree plus angle that causes any kind of rotation out from this building to immediately be picked up by one or the other. And on top of that, Pylon apparently too. <laughs> Pylon wants a piece of it, but Koi has that care package wingman, which has really been such a boon to a lot of teams, really, because the fact is it's like 100 plus bullets throughout the entirety, and you just go crazy with it. It does so much damage, and on it, and Koiful will be a demon with that, but TSM, they throw down the wall and start to navigate. They do have the ring information, and Evan going big with the havoc, letting that double AR medicine. Let's go ahead and jump into a listen and hear what the comms are like. Don't throw much, y'all. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I need to pop a bat. I need to pop a bat. Hold the down. Hold the down. I'm gonna queue up. I'm gonna queue up. They're getting shot in the back. I'm gonna queue up. Hey, can you climb? You might get pushed, Evan. You might get pushed right now. I'm good. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm good here. Let's two on you guys. I'm my need. I'm my need. I'm my need. I'm getting slow. I'm getting slow. I'm the bombing. One on me. I'm here. I'm here. Swing right. Swing right. I can't see anything. Where's my body? Where's my body? They're all low ground, they're all low ground, they're all low ground, all low ground. We're getting shot in the back. I got a bat, I got a bat. Climbing up! I'm out of here. I'm one shot. I'm literally one shot. They're pushing us. Left side cannon. Horizon one, horizon dead, horizon dead, I'm dead. Give me knock, give me knock. No, oh, man. And Moist Esports take out a Titan. Not contesting Legacy off drop gives them a very nice start to map number one and even better. Look, I heard Guild had the girlfriend buff today and looks like it's definitely paying off. Yeah, for TSM, they're really footing a difference in terms of the timing of that utility, bringing that Dark Veil down to try to push for height and then not effectively utilizing it in terms of the full three man to make the cross really comes back to bite them in their setup. As we jump on over to Disguise though, I feel like I have been watching them tick tock from the edges of zone this entire match. Sneaky, sneaky, sliding in through the south side here. Might find them some open space against Dino, but they have to be so careful. I know, I wonder if they're gonna bide their time here, freshen up on the meds, the white health, but it looks like DNO is like shaping up to say, hey, please watch your back. Or they're just frolicking, making it happen, but staying There's together. Ooh, you know it's gonna happen. Things are locking up. Let's jump into a disguise listening to hear the comms because they've already thrown down Senox. I'm trying to check, no, 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 no. Nice, nice, nice. Play slow, play slow, play slow, play slow, play slow, play slow, play slow. I'm in Phoenix. I'm picking one. Yeah, there's that Watson if you can. I'm, I'm height, I'm height. I'm Phoenix. Yeah. Trending, trending. Careful height, careful oh. height. Yeah, I see that. Careful height, all the seats are all the seats are not near then. Yeah, yeah, I see that. I'm popping about. Come to you. 67 height. I have no idea where that Watson went. Who cares? Yeah, this little area uh, right here. Calm sound chill, Zephyr. They sound like <laughs> they are working like a well-oiled machine. They showed up to work. They put it together here and they've locked down those mentals and as a result, actually coming on top of DNO and now have what can be an effective position for this end game. Getting out of this ditch is going to be the next question for this roster. But in terms of utility, I mean, they didn't utilize entirely that much to do so and they have more than enough time in the world to deal with legacy or potentially moist here, uh, whichever they make the decision on. Yeah, they showed up like a shark in the water. And as you see how stacked Pylon is, we're going to talk about the mass exodus. That will be all of the teams making their way down to minimal actual cover in that next zone. That choke that Nine Lies will be playing from about to be the next fight that breaks through Native opening the door, getting a knock onto a Wope. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But for Furia, dead center of Pylon. And this is great for Fury. We know they can lay down damage, especially when it comes to this specific matchup from the top of Pylon. They're going to be able to balloon scoring lines like that. Already 500 alone. One, except the one to be trained on, at least for now. Fun in those sight lines from behind the wall. That's the wrong side. Oh no, fun. That is so tough to make your way in. 
I love that uh, they went north, but this is just going to be, they're just part of all the congestion here. And Skirt now finding themselves in a tough position between Native here, Awakening going down, and Scurry and Alb trying to play alongside the knockdowns. But it's just Scurry left standing. And can we get a shield swap? Hopefully we'll be able to do that. We will. And the 1v1 against Rambo. And Rambo takes it. But you still have to reset, regain. And even then, we'll have to approach Nine Lives as Evolution joins Skirt in falling. This has been great moves from Nine Lives. And they got to woke back up from what was originally the fight on the edge against Native only moments ago here. And I highly doubt they're going to be able to make for full recoveries. And then on top of that, this rotation going into our next zone, climbing that hillside, if they can foot that appropriately, I mean, that's going to be something that gives them potentially a game winning spot. But hey, make a couple quick ordinances. Don't even have to land a shot. They don't have to do anything. The frag picks up both of them. I don't even care that they were trying to hit a reset, call in the Moby and get the third back in. There was no stabilization that was going to be allowed because Nine Lies took advantage of that situation. Now with just mere 20 plus seconds on the board, they can hit that wrap on the rotation and look for a playable space. But for the teams like GKS, Furious, Sentinels, Exit, Oblivion, you are in pylon and we have 10 seconds to make an exit and with madness on the horizon saving up those smokes we have the ultimate and we just need to hit the ground running rolling thunder in play potentially for this open-ended area furia though getting out potentially ahead of the action remember it was in a we saw a very similar rotation from squads and coming out of this hillside it was those that opted to play the edge slowly that were able to successfully survive. I am curious to see who is standing on the height of all places that might take advantage of any one of these teams. This just goes to show you why Horizon is so vital when it comes to those ultimates, even just preventing yourself from getting stunned in your own. You pop the grav lift and you keep on running straight into drop in gaming, straight into gaming gladiators, dropping gaming, dropping the dark veil to try and get ahead of it. But all you're going to be doing is in the line of sight of Furia, who is running for their life. DNO falls, Sentinels to join them. We're about to be in the final nine squads. Oh, and it's Nano beating out in terms of pacing over the side to find the first drop of Furia off of taking too much damage from the zone. Madness now left as a sole individual stuck between two squads will meet his maker just as quickly. LG have fallen as well. Now for GKS oversleepers in game and gladiators. Who will fall next? Don't want to extend out too much on this hillside because you only have this truck for cover. Well, picking up two eliminations thus far for oversleepers is not. Oh my God, Bottery. Can we see that again? Do it again. I'm about to tell you, this might be the best oversleepers I've seen yet. None other than the main man, Vottery, leading the pack here. Gaming Gladiators, as big as the name as that is, it's not going to be big enough to get out from below. Stunny over on the side, 30-30. We'll find shots where they count. Meanwhile, disguised, poised like the final boss in an S-tier dungeon of solo leveling, waiting for the opponents in zone. But with Good 10 cook. seconds left, we've got to hit the Ooh. rotation. I understand we're just going to eat away at the knockdown shields. Oblivion is the next team to exit map one. Look over on the edge here. Drop in on one side, moist on the other. A silent benefactor to most of this zone will slowly start having to get involved. It was only moments ago we saw them lay down the hurt on its Timmy. And now, well, Design has to make responses of their own. MT potentially on his edge of being broken. But, oh, Ooh. shot from the other side. The Radiant Transfer does come through, but we're still going to focus on getting that shield bat. MT falls and we just keep barricading Ooh. forward straight to Disguised and with Waltzy, a mere 10 HP and a dream. There's nothing you can do and Guild will likely fall next after a valiant effort, Disguised still maintaining their form as a final boss. Now into the final four squads. Meanwhile, on the other side of our zone, two teams that have to contest against one another, forced to play fence lines on the same area. 
A deep push of what I believe was an energy barricade only moments ago. Design remain alone here on the southern end. Legacy oversleepers drop in altogether. This is disguised game to win if they can force those teams to all take each other out because we have to move. Looks like we could potentially be looking for more grenades or any of that nature, some ordnance and design. Grabbing the ultimate high ground on that spire. Oversleepers here though, having a really solid start. We lose Vaudery and the Radiant Transfer comes through. Now it's just JP left standing as Dropping Gaming falls and Oversleepers to join them now. So tides are turned, Legacy disguised. Who's gonna take it, map number one? From within the smoke, they'll try to find the shots that they need, but it's Timmy from afar, taken back. A moment to hit a bat as a crack coming through from Eddie on the side with 33, but the push alongside him will find first knocks for the likes of Legacy. Not designed getting stunned from the rogue Watson fence from DNO. Timmy taking some time to restabilize. We're still in that 3v2 situation. Yanya grabs an armor swap and we are barricading out into an all out brawl designed last standing against the world in a 1v3. Ooh, we and it's just not going to be enough. They were locked in. They left it at the door. But at the end of the day, Legacy take the win in map number one. From a sleeping giant to the one who remains above, Legacy make one of the most influential representations of a game that we have seen thus far in the North American Pro League. And to say I'm surprised would be a darn lie. This has been something that everyone, all fans, have been waiting for. Look, I've been waiting for it. We were talking about it. I was like, look, if Legacy could just not do this contest on Stormpoint, they don't do it. They drop on over to Devastated Coast, and it's just a world of a difference. Now, mind you, this team does not have an org. If you're not familiar, Legacy used to be on that Luminosity roster prior towards the pickup of Sweet and Co. for, you know, split one here. But solid, solid showing there from the Legacy boys. Doing some subtle advertising on the broadcast ourselves. I'm just we, saying. Hey, they're I, orgless. I agree. I'm all for supporting all of our members, all of our competitors when it comes to ALGS because they deserve nothing but the best there. But I do want to talk about some other things. First of all, my prediction, pretty darn close with Disguised even managing yeah. to barely make it out there from what was probably one of the deepest rotations and treating it, I will say, remarkably well coming through from zone for a late rotation. And then on top of that, over sleepers. Yeah. Let's pull up those match results so we can talk about the score lines that everyone just achieved. But you're right, because Disguised, they land in North Pad. Let's talk about that rotation for sure. And to even approach it from the southern side to take DNO by storm. Legacy, a 22 point game to start off our match day five. Disguised, not too far behind them with 16 points. But honestly, I'm just more impressed with Oversleepers at this point. This is the best performance of Oversleepers by far here. They have already eclipsed what was their day three performance as well as their day two, and they are on trajectory to have their best placement yet from 20th to 19th, potentially more here. It's a really solid showing there from the crew, but let's jump on over to the second page here. See our outliers. X set that really tough rotation from the opposing side towards pylon cost them a few sentinels to join them as well which makes sense considering we saw that early bout and we at one point we had a solo for X set but even so native gaming picks up four eliminations on that side when they were dealing with skirt before being picked off by nine lies frag grenade <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's enough points there, but it was definitely a more top heavy game, which doesn't leave much for the rest of our lobby. So for teams like TSM, Oxygen, and Luminosity even looking to catch up is the name of the game here. But we'll take a look at some of the remaining stats of all of our rosters between Disguised and Legacy. There's a reason this one came down to a knife's edge between these two rosters. I mean, they're just putting up massive numbers of damage. Disguised were essentially just sitting back holding the large majority of space and zone and just putting pressure on everyone ahead of them. But for Oversleepers to make it out of that exodus of Pylon and grab seven eliminations throughout and maintain that trajectory, very nicely done for them. Yeah. 
solid start for all three of these rosters. But the question is, the remaining ability to represent and do it again is a question for all of them. Legacy, Oversleepers, and even Disguised in some of their falterings have been unable to do so. Is today the day? Ooh, that's a really good question. I don't know if it is the day, but it could be potentially next week. We've got some changes on the horizon. A new season of Apex Legends and you at home can earn breakout rewards when six legends becomes unlocked during the season. Now granted, if you've already got them unlocked, good for you. Maybe try to get your friends that aren't, you know, playing Apex, get them into the season. They can grab their legends because you can complete challenges to keep them forever. And also we've got some reactive flatline skins. Let's go ahead and check out the season launch trailer for season 20. I got you, legend. <sighs> Thanks for the save. Hey, you good? So, hero, what's the plan? Uh, how about good? Let's do some shopping. Three girls. Ha! That one's got sticky fingers. I think I'm gonna lose me life. You're good, amigo. Let's freaking go! You are lucky I am here to save you. Follow me. Now. Teamwork, Reed? That's not like you. Wow, that view is a work of art. The view being me, of course. <laughs> Both are very arty. I appreciate it, but whoever cleans this place up after we destroy it are the real legends. Hey. You ready for another round, shooter? Start a fight, start a fight. You promise. Man, every time we see that, Zephyr, I just get even more hype for season 20. I, I can't wait to see what it does to the entire game. I was gonna say, it's not just here in competitive, but just for casuals yeah. across the board, having the experience to find out what your legend holds is something that I think all of us are waiting to experience. All right, well, we're getting ready for match number two. Obviously, a impressive performance out of Legacy to kick things off and definitely a stark contrast as well to the last time these two groups went up against each other. They started in 20th, and then today they start in first. So they are absolutely turning things around. And now we're just gonna have to wait and see what the other Sleeping Giants are willing to do. Now, for folks at home, I will say it for Legacy's sake, in the last year, they finished 15th on day two into ninth on day three, but their day five performance is what finally got them back into it. That was our main question regarding if they can replicate. Well, they've done it before. Taking a look at these legend selections, nothing stands out particularly outside of DNO, Valkyrie and Watson, and of course, Native down there, still rocking the Wraith. Have to see what they can do with it here in this match and also be keeping our eyes on some of those contests. We saw what happened when Moist was able to kind of play out the game a little bit more down there at Echo HQ and what it did for Legacy as well. And then we also obviously have Oxygen and Nine Lies down there in Barometer this zone. It's gonna be interesting to see what some of these teams can do. But I like that you called out from match number one, Zephyr, just how much work DSG had oh. to do in order to get to that second place finish because that was not an easy road for them. No, and, and here's the truth. If Dino had been any, any amount of paying attention to some concepts there, I mean, that's something that immediately destroys that game plan. So for Disguise to treat it the way they did with the patience and pace that allowed them to come out on top is respectable in its own right here. But for Nine Lives and Oxygen starting a lot closer this time around, Nine Lives taking the center of Barometer Way and separating Vayne from the pack. 
trying to see if maybe they can get oh. an early pick here. This is not great. You can see them right on the other side of the door. Zephyrie also might be... Yeah, there was just, there was no way to save that. 2v1, he didn't really have any loot to help him either. I actually know that it's probably not best to even try and force that right now, but this is going to be a rough start for them. Yeah, and, and just getting into that separation alone is something that for Oxygen, I mean, we're looking in terms of improvements for nine lives, though. Double purple is more than a good place to be there, even if Oxygen are still alive. We'll hop on over to what is no longer a contest, but now a shared equated living space between the devastated coast and Echo HQ here. Moist, a bit of a roommate. <laughs> Some frenemy action going on. They know each other's there, but they're not They're not going to push it. it honestly, it, it boded better for them when they didn't. And so I think that that's probably what they're going to work with right now, especially when it comes to the likes of Legacy, getting a little bit of success under the belt. We know what a slay heavy team that they can be. And uh, I think that they're going to want more of that time to continue getting into those fights as we check in on a rotation coming out of native gaming right now, getting in nice and early to where this zone is going to shift to. And uh, this is actually going to be really really nice we see dropping gaming taking a little bit of damage on the way through of that rotation but they should be able to to make their way through on over to checkpoint as we potentially get a chance to look at the circles here a, a deep rotation through checkpoint might allude to one of our more rare zones that potentially calls itself home for an ending here but Treating this rotation still with respect. They know they've got enemies out in front of them here. And for native gaming, even if this building is seemingly theirs, I mean, you saw that. Ooh. All right, well, you get your look here, Zephyr, at the zone. Be nice for DSG. Dropping gaming's already in there. Everyone making a very, very quick move. One of those teams being X at this time, not having to go up against Sentinels as they were caught in the same choke last time, trying to make their way past Pylon. Now kind of on opposite sides of each other. Everyone trying to find a home though. Yeah, I mean, at least for Checkpoint, you get this kind of major split between the top direct POY and some of the extension of those houses below, which actually kind of holds a lot more teams than most squads would expect. The big caveat, though, to Checkpoint is it's kind of similar to something we say when we talk about Geyser on World's Edge. If you're not well within this place of play, those teams are going to punish you as you try to accumulate or get through these chokes. Perhaps we shift our orbit this way. Checking in with Xset now, trying to get a little bit of an idea for how they want to handle this next rotation. They're comfortable for now, but they definitely know there's some teams in the general vicinity. Also, seeing what LG have working for them right now. This oh. is the tough part. This is the tough part. They're looking to try and get a pick there. <laughs> I'll tell you, double picks already right off the bat. GKS left to just one. And while Stignati is able to put up the damage where it counts, make it two. In the end, Sentinels still find their response here. But the problem is, it's going to come at the cost of potentially their life. Native Gaming, they know they are no slouch to the action, no slouch to the sounds that be. And for Zenile, sitting on just but one shot, all they need is a nice angle from Rambo. Sentinels cannot catch a break right now. They try to go a little bit aggressive and are instantly third party native though, getting pushed up by big gaming gladiators who come into the building right after. And everybody being so close means that the second these fights happen, if you're not ending them quickly or if you're not disengaging and getting somewhere safe, someone is ready to try and clean it up to clear out the area or get that KP on the board. Native, make the choice to disengage, play this a little bit safer. Don't want to have to force it if they don't have to. And now GG will be living in that building. Uh, personally, I was surprised with that too because there was a very minor split between Clayne there and so I'm glad that they are able to find their way back up to height, but those two positions likely to be something permanent for the remnants of our rosters. For Moist, though, they're nowhere, nowhere close to our zone, but still finding themselves in a place of action here. Fifth overall right now, picking up some early KP would continue to protect the little bit of a lead that they've found. 
you know, they might not have gone for that contest with Legacy, but they've got similar rotational paths, and that's who they're dealing some poke damage down onto as they're both trying to push their way through Pylon so they can get somewhere a little bit safer into the next zone. And this might be a little bit of a stalemate back and forth here obviously don't want to let legacy get an easy rotate but they can only hold on to it for so long hmm. skirt on other sides here actually in one of the more surprisingly playable areas of this zone that has yet to really be taken i wouldn't say down beast but the outskirts of the west still very much an available option i do worry though with dno just behind them out towards the mill if they opt to play even further south could be taken advantage and for disguised this might be an excellent game here already getting a sneak peek of that ring allowing them to contest and stay alive out towards the west for a lot longer than most of these teams will have to deal with on the interior of checkpoint yeah, it's it's just what they did last match too they went into the area of the zone that literally nobody else was in everyone was further north towards pylon and they decided to go to the south edge and they were able to hold that position all the way through until the end game it looks like they're setting themselves up to do something similar here as we now check in with tsm a team that actually went out very unexpectedly up against moist in match number one and you know they were not happy about that no <laughs> especially after what was supposed to be a consistent Aretha on the push. I like the fact that they are opting for this Northern Rotate. They've got the same mind as teams like Disguise here, able to play out a more defensive position from the Western side, potentially if they don't opt for the checkpoint choke. Granted, I, I think fighting into checkpoint directly from this Northern position is something that rarely works out, especially with drop in flying above and Disguised. Shots on the West. Drop in going past disguise though, still leaving them that area. But as we kind of see where they're opting to hold right now, they are on the north side of this zone. Potential for TSM to rotate their way through straight into DSG's path based off of where TSM was. So that's something we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on as drop in gaming look like they found a place that they want to hold for now, with like you said earlier, Zephyr Skirt right on those uh outskirts <laughs> just on the edge where the name states and where they belong here and they're going to continue <laughs> to find their way deeper into the edge they're back into the zone there dropping gaming shots uh pushing them farther and farther away that could have been a really good spot held by them early and instead kind of taken away oh Whoa. checking back in with that rotate out of tsm like i said running straight into dsg an opportunity here to kind of figure out the game plan as they have at least this bunker to hold out in for the time being. They are right on the inside of this next zone for now, but they know that DSG is going to definitely be gatekeeping them as much as possible and taking TSM out of the lobby every single time is a, uh, you know that that's what these teams are gunning for. But this is something, I mean, I think TSM are happy to have in their wheelhouse in comparison to a lot of these other fights. I mean, this is just a direct 3v3 situation for this roster to come out on top of. It's unlikely that we see teams from Checkpoint dropping off of their height and even further rotations out and away from the down beast would be very unusual. So it's all about the approach here. One, though, that uh, apparently might have meat on the other side. Got a little nervous for a second there, I'm not going to lie. Meat Lovers opt to go through a different choke instead of wrapping all the way around right into the path of TSM. They would have potentially pinched TSM between themselves and DSG. Instead, they go a more direct route to where the next zone is going to be, but also might potentially run across a couple of teams in the process. So we'll have to see just how safe they make that rotation. Might be able to find a home for themselves as we try and see what Moist is doing just barely on the outskirts of the next ring so they're trying to move themselves into a slightly safer position with at least one squad in their crosshairs making this a little bit more difficult dno was the team that was in mill here earlier this game and 
It's going to be nine lives this time around on the other side. Oxygen also potentially within a realm to pinch here. And while it has not been the best starts for Oxygen, we're past the contest at this point. All right, they, they're looted up. They're running and gunning. So potentially able to lay in some great impacts as nine pressures from one side and moist with the other is something we will have to watch out for. Oh, you can see on the minimap there just how many teams are about to engage nine lives. We're looking at Moist now. It's Skirt trying to push their way through, hearing those shots and wanting to see if they can follow up with it. Nine lives now down to two, trying to keep themselves alive here. Going to blast out the door there for just a moment. More as Laser is in the midst of being stuck on the revive. Scurry fully eliminated as Dynasty able to find a bit of the dance back into the house of health here. Phoenix Legacy, or my apologies, a Phoenix kit <laughs> available on the other side for some recovery. Checking back in on what was going on with TSM and DSG. Looks like TSM have backed off here just a little bit. Still kind of going back and forth with that poke damage, but haven't fully decided if they want to push towards DSG or opts out of it and wrap back around the, this other choke where a couple teams have also made their way through. But TSM, like you said, they know they've got a straight up 3v3 right now. Otherwise, somebody would have intervened by now. And this might be a fight they're willing to take. This is so difficult for TSM to cross this open gap, but they have finally been able to shore it up even slightly. And that's going to be the wall from the other side. Make it two to give them what I actually believe would be a good amount of cover to get into the action. But how brought down in the middle of a gravity lift, it's a 2v3. Oh, the 30-30 putting in work for enemy there. And now DSG are going to try and make that push and see if they can clean this up. Verhol, so does not want to make it easy on DSG. Doing a good job, at least taking down Designful. They're starting to get low, but TSM are doing a fantastic job playing this defensively. Eventually just down to rep, trying to see what he can do with the Volt here. DSG trying to clean this one up. Fantastic Ooh. smoke. Keeping reps alive right now. Zephyr, he almost closed that one out. It's just too difficult to get behind the double knocks. And in this moment of weakness for both of these rosters, what could have been an incredibly clean fight in position is instead leapt upon by the likes of Moist here. A perfectly timed third party that should set them up amazingly for this end game circle. As if, I mean, you'll take a look at it. We are heading to the outside checkpoint. Nobody gets to survive. Nobody thought this was going to happen, but Moist, like you just said, look how beautiful their position is. Now nobody can wrap around from behind that mountain that's right behind them. They've got some cover that they can work with, and they'll be on a slow-ish side of the zone so that they can just kind of sit there and wait for everybody else to take each other out as they have to make their rotations in. Well, for Native and Crew, everyone knows now in the interior, it's going to be a do-or-die rotation ahead, so you might as well pick up the KP while you can. For Native, down at claim, but still have the safety of a potential conduit for the upset in a 2v3. Uh, from behind, taking shots in, and as a result, will be dropped out in 11th, with now Evolution potentially looking on the other side. It's all going to come down to which teams start making their moves early here, trying to solidify a little bit of space. So many of them had set up in the buildings that it's going to be tough. Like you said, Evolution going through right now. They actually are holding this choke pretty well. They've managed to clear out the space around them, and they know anyone that wants to get to the zone that tried to set up in checkpoints is going to have to rotate past them, and they might be able to do a little bit of gatekeeping here. Meanwhile, LG's are struggling to get out of the rest of these teams. Stuck above with Sweet down below. Furia from behind is never the team you want to be taking damage from. Meat also likely to drop just as quickly right and from Luminosity. This evac's got to come in clutch to keep this team going. They definitely don't get out naturally here, so they're going to be landing directly in the heat of these fights. Ooh. That was definitely a difficult rotation, but LG drops straight down and off to go for this fight. So let's take a quick listen in and see how the rest of it plays out. No, 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 don't rush it, don't rush it, don't rush it. I'm, I'm rushing, I'm rushing. 
I'm not playing other side of wall. No Q, no Q. In the zone, in the zone, dead smoke, dead smoke. Smoke. No Q, just shield player. Phoenixing, Phoenixing, Phoenixing. Player, hold, hold, hold. No Q. Dark, dark, dark. Dark, dark. Dark, dark. I'm playing Logan, Logan, Logan on me, Logan on me. Really good, really good, really good, really good. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm batting. Dude, Northwest is in the suite on your side. Northwest, they're fighting on your side. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm with you guys. Hey, Logan, hey, Logan, hey, Logan. Dude, nice. One was over here. I think under, under, under. Res, res, we, res, we, res. Okay, I'm looking for the third. I'm ready. Well, I'm you res, you res. I'm smoking you. I'm swap. We're fine. We're fine. No one nears. No one nears. He's, he's running. He's running. Phoenix. Phoenix. He's running. Phoenix. 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 There's gonna, might be a team above us, though, guys. Yeah, I'm looking. I need them all. I need them all. You're good. I'm yeah, I think they are. I think they are. I think they are right here, guys. Take this. Yeah, we're good. Take this fucking. Popping ult excel. Popping ult excel. I'm dropping ult excel. You need conduit ult for that corner right now. You need a bunch of it. You shoot I'm your conduit up there and we kill them. They cannot cross, okay? Yep. We need a conduit all above us. Yes, do you want me to jump up and conduit them? I'm looking, I'm looking. Yes, yes, yes. You need a conduit all the way. 10%, 10%. Under everyone. Keep holding, keep holding. 10%, 10%. Get wall, player. We can win this game. We can win this have game. Wall. I have wall. We, we need a conduit all this like and this. then back up yeah. and hold the Kraber, 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 Kraber. Okay, okay, okay. I'm dropping wing here, Funk. Grab the wingman, please. I need the wing. They're taking the wing out of this body. Okay, okay, yeah, you're right. We just walk in. We just walk in here. Do you have a digi? Yes, I have a digi. I have a digi. I need an extra one if you see one. It should be in the box. It should be in the box. I have a digi. I have a digi. I have a digi. I have one. I have one. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You guys are good. Nice. Keep your digi. Okay. I'm popping. In. I'm popping. So, in. Everyone take a breath. From a sky nade above to damage and more, Luminosity survive a double pinch here. Exit now landing out just ahead of him, finding damage where the can of crack foul with Coifle on the other side, laying in with the 30-30 will eliminate them essentially caught with their pants down. I will say it doesn't get much better for X set Keon on the other side, making this actually what looks like just a direct 1v1 here as that zone, well, it's gonna be doing most of the damage. I was wondering if Keon was gonna try and do anything with his wrath status to see if he could maybe clean this up, make it more difficult than it needs to be. It's exactly what he does. Clearing out Exit, now having this entire side of the zone to himself. So that means we're really just focusing on Moist and drop in gaming to balance out and see if Keon can play spoiler for any of it. Oh, well, for Moist already, double knocks found with, well, I'll tell you what, the energy barricade doing most of the work from a cleanup on TSM and design to now a 1v3. That's a victory lap for Moist. Oh, Keon just a little bit too far away and Moist completely closed out with style. Match number two and that was well deserved because yet another situation here, Zephyr, where we had to watch them rotate from pretty far away. A few times they ran into Legacy along similar rotational paths. Then they were able to put themselves up in that northern, that northeast portion of the zone, completely cleared it out for themselves and were able to just hold it and play the rest of the game so smart. I'll tell you what, if you're either disguised or TSM right now, you are feeling really bad about having difficulties with those early fights because it was a guaranteed assured win there for them in the end. And I know, I know we like to talk about the resurgence of a lot of squads, but for Moist, I mean, come on. Second place the last time ANC mat up. I mean, it's to no surprise that they've got to pick up at least one win on the day of. I, I mean, they looked great. They were not afraid to take some really aggressive third parties, took out big names in the process, got themselves a priority position in that zone. So that was a well-deserved win on behalf of Moist. But yet again, Stormpoint has not been disappointing. <laughs> All days ever. These games have been fantastic. I was gonna say, the chaos of the open-ended first game to now the illusion of checkpoint into the <laughs> edge of the western side of Down Beast has made it, I mean, I, I, a bit frustrating to say the least for some of these squads out there, but winners will be crowned nonetheless. The real question is, did Tiff do this? Did she call this and ah, we don't know it? That's right. Collusion behind the scenes. I'm kidding. It's just a candle, a different C letter word. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm excited to see what that will do uh and and where a lot of these teams ended up because there was definitely a point where i lost track of just how many kills we were getting on the board for some of our top squads and i think they ended up being a little bit more spread out than we realized as well hopefully moist though like you said popped off last time that these groups saw each other they have found a little bit of a groove here this time around i'm loving having them in this region oh 
Absolutely, especially finding themselves, you know, in uh, or well above the tempo alongside most of these squads. And the same can be said for a, a team that rhymes with, well, I don't know what it rhymes with, Dark Zero. <laughs> There's no word that rhymes with Dark Zero, I don't think. If there is, let me know. Mm. Mark is a hero. There you go. Yeah, it's close. It's not Mark, a word. A hero, yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. I guess there is the whole zero to hero song. So there's that. Oh. All right. Yeah. You know what? Let's let we'll, we'll take a look at our series results. See how everything played out for some of these teams. Or we'll take a look back at the LG fight right Ooh. now so we could see how that. OK, honestly, this is actually something we need to take a look back at because Zephyr, this was insane. Not only do they go for an insane rotation, but they drop straight down into a fight and just unload their entire kit. There was a point, and this was it, where I did not think they were going to be able to survive, but not only do they stick the res, but then Sweet finds them the safest spot possible that they could have possibly given themselves a reset in. Yeah, down here on the low ground underneath, just in the cubby hole of zone as they dance between the wall is the answer that Luminosity finds, like you said, directed from Sweet of all people. So between Gaiman, of course, and Furia as a whole, kind of find themselves in difficulty. And then of course, the major super ordinates from above to give themselves the access they need to leap onto this high ground and take advantage of this position is finally what gives Luminosity their credence in this area. Beautiful, beautiful performance. And honestly, if they didn't have exit here, there's a very real possibility that they could have pushed up from this area of the zone and ended up winning the whole thing. But like you said, exit shut them down on that side of things to take a look for these match two results. And this is kind of what we were expecting. Like I said, I think the kills were a little bit more spread out than we've realized. And that's exactly what we've got all the way through the top five right now, Zephyr. All right, exit Luminosity, Fury, and Moist picking up the lion's share with drop in, of course, having themselves that surviving position out in the West as well to at least pick up third to equalize things out but in terms of the overall standings across the board down as we go game of gladiators the only other team to really put up a fight in their early i'll say pickups i mean this was a really strong storm point match for a lot of these teams we'll take a look at the second page as well and see where they shook out uh we saw some early engagement obviously out of nine lives saw this last time around too they're still getting some kp due to that contest down there and then finding a few on those rotations out as well but it didn't stop oxg when it comes to how they were able to perform overall once again though we're still looking at sentinels down there struggling a little bit as well as tsm just can't catch a break when it comes to some of these fights no, it has been a surprising issue to say when we talk about the isolated 3v3s that this roster uh, tends to, I mean, be undeniable at when it comes to matching up against anyone in North America, have not been able to find one whatsoever. First against Moist, now against Disguise. One last opportunity for them to shine here on Stormpoint and put up, well, some form of points because right now, 19th is never the place I ever expected to be saying when it comes to that name i mean to be fair it's still early you know we we still have some time in the day and tsm are known for just putting themselves under unnecessary amounts of pressure and then just absolutely slaying out after but right now moist and legacy sitting comfortable at the top of our leaderboard after these first two matches really consistent performances out of both of them especially when you look at legacy with the placement points versus the kp and this is something we love to see Oh, absolutely there, tied up on the end, but still an incredibly close game, and one that notably shifted the success of these rosters completely on its head, with Moist dropping and even Xset making a return there. We didn't get a chance to discuss it in that versus fight, but they made an excellent decision off the back end of that evac to actually not go for the push into zone, but instead take the surprise drop-in fight over Luminosity that they successfully won, and as a result, ended up a Above them as a result. All right, this is definitely setting up the last storm point match to be a really exciting one. And then we'll have to see what changes as we switch on over to World's Edge, but we're not there yet. We are not there yet. So 
before we get into any more action, Emiya got a sneak peek at this a little bit earlier, which means, N.A., now it is your turn. Obviously, season 20 is right around the corner, and everything that you thought that you knew, well, you might not be so correct, okay? Whether it's competing in an updated ranked system that incentivizes combat or playing in mixtape and making your debut in Thunderdome, season 20 will have you instantly queuing up for the next game. The new LTM straight shot will drop you into an even quicker battle royale experience, all while you earn the new reactive R99 skin and more with the battle pass. So gear up and flex your style, legend. The world is watching. Being a legend, nah, it ain't just about winning, mate. It's an attitude you show up with. Remembering every bloody drop. Put in 10,000 hours. What a rush! I leveled up? Hell yeah! Choice! Gonna get rough as guts. Come on now, bring it. Here we go. Batching myself up a bit. I never quit. All eyes on us. Uh, we can't hide it when you just fly. You don't need no pilot. That's the best you got, mate. You can't crash this castle. Wait too real, need a moment of silence. Better luck next time. Look at the time, stuck in my prime to be this good. I really thought you belonged in here with professionals. You misguided sod. <laughs> you think that's it? You aren't ready for this dance. So tell me when to go. Feel bad when you came from the club. Underestimate me and pay the price. It's my turn. Lights, cameras, high standards, test the top of that mountain, nothing we cannot handle, crowd, favorites, world's greatest, and I'm still with the same team, it's us versus everything. I love when the spotlight's on me, Put in that I'm always watching. You want to be a real legend? Zoom in, zoom out, zoom up. Mm, game's changing, mate. All eyes on us. So however you used to drop. Hardly a challenge. It's time to drop a little hotter. Like that. We are on the cusp of season 20 of Apex Legends, the fifth anniversary of Apex. And man, it has been a journey. When you think back to the first seasons that you have ever played on Zephyr, when did you start playing Apex? What is it right at drop? 2019, in the heat of beta, I was there on a PC that couldn't even make it work, but I was playing. <laughs> I love that same for me. I started in 2019, but you got a sneak peek at that gameplay trailer that just dropped, but you at home can compete in ranked, updated with a high risk, high reward symptom that incentivizes those combat through each ranked split. Now, granted, I said the splits for ranked are coming back. And also we have these magnificent breakout rewards, the Wraith legendary skin if you compete all eight six sets of challenges and you get those beautiful trackers to go alongside it but hear me out as a little squirrely wraith main zephyr <laughs> i like it i'm gonna give it a solid seven out of ten no i'll give it an eight out of ten it's pretty it's pretty cool it has been raised the rating has increased i'll tell it you has. what if that's what you're excited for i'm excited for the anniversary event uh, especially because uh, apex has gone out of their way to target so many of our favorite creators and i think that's awesome from orax to vicky palami to shiv and heck even rain day he got to have his own r99 skin 
can you imagine that man got to play a season earlier and was probably putting out so much content to go alongside it but make sure you tune in check all the social medias to see a sneak peek of those creator skins but as we look towards our map rotation ahead of us that final map on storm point congratulations to legacy and moist esports both waving that white flag of echo hq no longer contesting but both finding success i love that neighbors in arms here on the southeast and while the zone maybe isn't directly pulling there we still feel its influence in that the people it brings are strongly rooted into terms of success on storm point we'll see if we potentially reintroduce that side of the map or maybe i don't know get something like cenote Ooh, that would be interesting. I do love Cenote Cave Zones, but uh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. We did get a Cedo at one point, so we could go back that way. But for now, Legacy having a strong performance. Happy birthday, Coach Pastillo. We see you. We know you're Aww. out there and you're having fun. Well, it's a good start, but it needs to keep going here for these squads. The only two notables still remains in native. And of course, DNO still working with that Valkyrie as we did get to see it just a little bit at the tail end of some of their rotations at the start of last game. But for the rest of our rosters, it is the season 19 meta and more. It is, it's Bangalore, it's Catalyst, and then a few remnants of conduit bloodhound and a multitude of other legends but sheer talent willpower just ahead of the season 20 changes where things like watson will come into the fray a little bit more now that the interceptor pylon has a perk that spawns arc stars can only imagine it's just like interesting to me and then at one point i think once you get to level three on the purple i've been looking at memorizing a lot of these ahead of what's to come for match days you can throw down two interceptor pylons do you get double the arc stars then I don't know if you get double the arc stars, but you don't get quite as much heals. Even still, it is it is a disgusting setup for them that we'll have to wait and see as these teams will, of course, be taking advantage. And I'll tell you what, the scrims themselves will be probably the most entertaining that we've gotten to see. For now, though, Oxygen. This is some of the best loot they've started off with, but not a direct fight in comparison to the last or first time it's really tough because at the top of the show we were talking about how oxen just bounced back off of a match day win returning home to barometer on storm point now granted they're finding themselves in a little bit of a similar situation here that they found themselves back on match day two in a and c despite still having barometer this contest though which has been very hit or miss and kind of yeah, all over the place because it's not really a direct contest they're not really no. vying for the same position they just it's whoever gets center of this circle here in barometer the next person takes high ground and typically from there they'll split off yeah I mean, it, it is a i hesitate to say contest at this point anymore instead these two teams are basically sharing this poi which in the end is objectively making them both weaker and this is when we start to see teams make that decision where they say you know what for the future this is something that we're just going to have to adapt to and change because it was in our last matchup of both a and c where respectively they finished 14th and 15th as neither of them were able to get i mean good things running on storm point dropping gaming making their rotation towards that mid map just south of cascades they got to get through first but it looks like another team has hit an evac tower through rotation. Native makes their way on that approach, which granted, you think about their rotation, they start in Sito, so we're just hopping on over towards Cascades where Exit, curious where they've positioned themselves accordingly because you don't see them ah, just north of Cascades. Not a far rotation for them either. Well, I'm starting to see a little too many teams here in Cascades, which is starting to allude to what might be the setup for our zone. Exet's Koifel on the other side, already finding some of those initial knocks on to drop in gaming, stunning as they just took to the evacs above. And with that at least landing, it should be able to get the revive here with this coverage. It does come through in a Phoenix kit to join them. Jayon. All of them forced to pop the Phoenix kits, but with so many teams moving into Cascades, it's gonna be really hard for one team to leave their building and make a full send push elsewhere. Mm -hmm. LG really putting the pressure on to oversleepers and Moist here taking on a little bit of split gaming gladiators. 
Now we've seen Moist on the edge the last two games here, and it was last time around where it truly benefit them as they avoided being in the heat of action and checkpoint, forcing them to play on the outskirts, which in the end ended up being where these squads wanted to be. As a result, with first knocks on to DNO and potentially more, they do have to be respectful of game, and but with the hard pull towards Cascades, it is the perfect opportunity for teams to keep moving in. I do like GKS's and LG's position more than anything. Could be one of those zones that we see finished out towards the no name of our zip line buildings of the north there. Yeah, this is really interesting because we did get a lot of northern zones on this last match day all around the wall and even one that ended very similarly to where LG has positioned themselves and Exet had played from the building just north of them a little bit closer to where GKS is to say the least and it didn't really bode well for them so I like where Exet has positioned themselves the issue is if it does pull up more towards where Luminosity is they're going to have all of the congestion from Cascades and such to deal with. Well, hopefully these teams are taking their allergy medication. I am. That's for sure. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking water. I'm taking allergy medicine and I'm watching. If you that's hit that's that evac the tower. power of Apex Legends, folks. We get we get our... Uh, our health in order here in free evolution. They've got to get their position in order. Vudo forced to drop down and Yaz caught out as a result. Sentinels are very happy with the gift that has been delivered. A prowler in RK then Zan. I mean, how, how can you lose it? You don't. You let the auto prowler absolutely do work. Now with the numbers in their advantage, we just start putting the pressure on the remaining team members. Well, back to building at least for now, but I mean, that's the threat. That's that's job done. You know, that's 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 you know, you make a single statement, you say stay out of our territory, okay? And then Sentinels, they're on their way to victory. Are you a mob boss, Zephyr? What are we what are we doing here? I you know what? We it's not a far reach for a guy like me. <laughs> what can't you do? You hit him with a howdy howdy. Swim. You're, you know, a lot of, oh, okay, fair enough. Swimming, that's fine. As long as you can cast Apex, I, I'm, I'm loving it at this point. But Sentinels, they pick up another one. Just consistently whittling down, you leaving Eurice, the last member standing for Evolution. And I think Sentinels are proud and happy Ooh. with that. So they're going to go ahead and disengage. <laughs> but for now, the routing has occurred. Furia, his Watson, really wanting a second place overall on the board and well if they've got a rat on luminosity to make it happen and take their position i think we've seen this before specifically with disguise and dno one mad swing here with funked and sweet on the ready of edge something that furia are unable to capitalize on at least for now double dark fails down make it impossible to push out of this but it was an attempt it was something that is for sure now furia back to the drawing board inside of command center now that luminosity knows they're there sweet has probably conjured up at least 500 different scenarios of how they're going to take down furia the i i like i can think of just the brain memes with the, the calculations appearing yes. over his heads as a uh, furia themselves are the threat upon their back and the crazy thing is they're actually a better set of resources and sustainability to potentially make something happen here it's just that they don't have uh, the full cooldowns anymore so a bit of a shame but ultimately in the end contesting for the opposite side here where you kind of get in towards that waterfall height it, i mean that's just as good right if they can go into a fight which is a lot more easy to access should be able to find similar success I will say they don't get the eliminations onto Luminosity, but what they do get is that next zone information. And if you have ring three and you know where you need to go, which is exactly what they're looking for, and you're kind of getting that inkling on their mini map as Madness just finds the perfect spot for this evac tower and coupled alongside the grav lift to get them up over halfway to make that less susceptible to getting shot at. So let's keep an eye wow. on where they're going for. Playing down here at the bottom of this lift, which means the zone is not pulling 
towards oh. command center. Back down low even in comparison to what we are used to potentially back towards that river there which i know for a fact there's multiple teams that aren't going to be prepared for a rotation like that for oversleepers mirroring what we just saw out of Furia, maybe potentially not towards the exit but down south we'll have to wait and see this is a roster that has started today i'll say hotter than usual but at least for right now hasn't eclipsed the points that we've seen previously they need to continue to put it up on the board very true they need to bounce back after a non-preferential game two but gg here with the new org buff and a wingman trying to fight a little bit further north multiple teams on the horizon and dno gaming just ahead of them 10 seconds on radiant transfer here as they're sticking the natural heels that be this is not a terrible position for Game Virus, especially if no okay. one's going to come from the south side. Narkstar and a couple of other ordinances, though, might force them to make a move. It's a really good shout because are they watching their back? Woo! The frag comes through. It does the damage. It finds true. But a Radiant Transfer was there waiting to be able to get them back to full form, and they've already hit the shield bat accordingly. But as you see, DNO from the other side do have a pylon available smokes down and digi in hand for nano i mean there's only so many options you can really work with but for nine lives oh, oh now now on the back end here one bad take a couple of good shots poised out there could be their end new with great response drop that down As we get a good look at the map before we go back towards that DNO GG engagement. Nine lies do hit the rotation out. They do not want to push through that tunnel, but the hard pull comes through and Exet have situated themselves quite nicely for this Cascade Falls ending. Well, we're, I mean, we're back down south, up north, to, into Cascades now, to the buildings themselves. So far, squads still playing out from the height. I guess this ends up working whether they like it or not. Gaming Gladiators, as a result, are actually allowed to make the exit from the Jurassic Park choke. And four, well, my lies behind the back of them here. See if they might be coming over or potentially a bit later. Even Gaming Gladiators, though, isn't that interested about actually crossing the distance given how open this can be so just waiting things out we do have plenty of time the team has hit the high ground it could be a multitude of teams looking for those evac tower rotations nine lies being one of them settling just underneath oxygen esports oxygen who desperately need eliminations and a turnaround performance here in map number three double purple on gold i mean this is i mean especially in comparison to nine lies below them i mean this is your opportunity to make something happen it is sadly information that they don't entirely have here but does it get much easier for nine lives to do something about this i mean think about their rotation ahead a lot of teams are going to have tough rotations ahead specifically moist and legacy who come from that southern side of storm point but they're still trying to make their way waltzy up just ahead scouting for information above on the pineapple but for legacy making that approach straight into where furia has positioned oh. themselves yanya decimated keon within one hp and a dream yaguarez and yazul definitely need to clutch this up big moves in from the other side with madness will be the access point for the start of damage on our last two here a black hole thrown into the interior with some arc stars to make a bit of the boot, but Watson will be the one to lay in the real damage that counts. And still, oh, external pressure out here from DNO is going to turn the tides of this fight. Yaguarez and Keon, a massive 1v1, and the swing comes through, and Legacy, they're able to eliminate Furia. Let's jump on board with Furia to hear what their next plans are for this third party. On him. Dead. No, I'm Let's go. fucking go. I'm turning around to look behind us. <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing the same. Okay. Nice, good shit. Killed. Fucking shit, dude. Keep it fucking okay. going. I decide. Do we look for that as yes, well? Yes, 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 yes. 
Well, if there's one thing I learned, Zephyr, is that the vibes are high there for Moist Esports as they grab the lone standing member of Legacy. But for the north side of Cascade, over here by the waterfall, things are looking dire, specifically for meat lovers who have found themselves by that waterfall. Oh but touching back onto Moist, well, goodbye, Waltzy. No closer to their end for TSM. A 3v3, one that we look for in terms of success, is stunted just a bit. Shot out from afar. Reps will have to slow the pace of things to stick a bat in the midst of the smoke and will be able to finish off Meat Lovers in the end. But we know for a fact Luminosity from across and what is 30 seconds till zone push means for TSM. They don't make it much further here. They're just caught out by so many 30-30s. The entire kill feed lights up from the hands of Oversleepers, from Luminosity, and even Xset still going through. But for LG, who have maintained that position from TSM, will now be faced with a heck of a rotation of their own down towards the south, further into Cascades. We got a sneak peek of where it is pulling from that kind of picture in picture. And Exet will have just a sh little bit of their building in that next zone. So fingers crossed for them on that end game because they need it. Oh. Disguised, another roster that has to make, albeit a different but similar issue in terms of a rotation up through. Well, actually, no. Surprisingly, out far enough towards the Northwest, Disguised are already in. They actually have a bit of cover that should allow them to sustain longer. LG, though, they'll take it to the Oversleepers. You're not wrong. Start throwing out all the damage. Digi threats a muck to keep them alive. Funk doesn't even need one. He's just shooting and it's working. But can he get the last little bit of damage onto that player? No, they do not. GKS falls and blinks her. Actually opens the door towards Oversleepers, oh. eliminating Vaudery, and the swing comes through, but it doesn't manifest because they're a bush now, Zephyr. They're bushes. They've taken root here, like some of our other great teams on Storm Point, and will, I bet you, surprisingly survive longer than some will expect, as Luminosity now has new foes to deal with in an attention span that is quickly directed elsewhere, oh. and quickly with a 30 30 finding big moves. It's very respectable here. Sweet and funk. The swing comes through and straight on to oversleepers. Oh. And just like that, they are eliminated. Beautiful timing on the radiant transfer to hit the reset and prioritize the Woo. slow healing. But the issue is it's moist on the outskirts with a direct line of sight onto Luminosity, one of their biggest threats, but they're still able to anchor down into that next zone here. They've already shot out the piercing spikes to try and fend off any pressure from that northern side. This is really good for Luminosity. If they continue to pressure out uh, the remnants of Moist in this final circle and push them more directly into the fights against Native Oxygen and those who set themselves up directly in Climatizer, this could be the win that they have been searching for. Disguised, finally up from the low ground and a major split between this team. Does it at least currently result in any knocks, but looks, well, a bit nasty. Is definitely nasty and I think back to their match day two it was in game five where they had their 20 elimination game for luminosity but who knows they could see success early on for disguise who looked like that final boss after map number one they're already racking up the eliminations into the top 10 sitting on four so keep your eyes on designful oh moist Eliminated by native as this guy's take to the height here. Big drop in fadeaway shots. At least find one. Timmy stuck on the outskirts will at least eliminate Crust as they'll be sending them home with exit. Looking for escapes potentially. Well, not outside, but at least into the corner. This is going to allow, well, disguise to reset. This is what's tough. They lost their horizon. They don't have the grav lift to get up towards enemy, but we do see the evac tower come through. Is that going to be Timmy's ploy to try to get to high ground? This is just crazy here. It's not much of a high ground. It's just a whole lot of sight lines that need, need to find safety from Luminosity. Really? Let's string it in where it hurts here. Sweet though. Boys to keep that pressure in line, allowing them to drop forward or even exit to walk out and contest for high ground positioning at the wrong time. Might be a slip up that comes back to bite them. 
have some birds perched on their roof and now Xset has taken towards the bottom. Timmy oh trying to make that early rotation get out of head of the team beneath them. Albeit we know it's Xset. You can even hear the audio cues of a res nearby coming through and Dim Timmy on the rooftop gets sought out by multiple teams. Even Luminosity across the way. Funk picks up that knock. I'm honestly shocked to see that deep of a rotation into I mean, what could have been assuredly height that was held here. Exet going to be one of the first squads to extend their utility for a successful move here. It's a little early in terms of final zones, and actually, it completely seals off this fight between them and Luminosity. This is tough, right? Exet, the sleeping giant, going up against the powerhouse of Luminosity. Fun falls incredibly low, and Knock has to hit the shield back, so Koifel has to do enough damage, and Koifel goes big, taking down Luminosity. It's a big win for them, and they sustain on height here, but they'll lose out one on the revive, which could lead to a full send from any one of these teams. Sitting in Cascade, but Oxygen, they can't quite make that move, knowing they've still got to deal with a squad from below. Xset's cover, though, is ticking. It is a dime bomb here. Not much to truly sustain with as evacs are down. Three bullets left on the wingman, two. One, we're going into the final zone with only one weapon here. But as we seek to go forward, we're inching our way closer. We've seen Oxygen make plays with evac towers in the end zone. Koi, just down there below. We've seen the early rotation come through. We've got a bangle Ooh. and Koi is last standing as a solo. So influential here, able to find the drop and first knock on the oxygen. Okay. Puts a gravity lift on the exit as that finally comes out. Finally, Oblivion are allowed to leave, but they might have just decided that game for everybody. They fall and now Oblivion taking on the duo of Oxygen Esports. Radiant transfer to go down and they drop. Whoa. They need a big win here. And Aiden goes massive. Now we turn the tides towards Reeds. The dance of the knockdowns comes through. We just need to connect. We're hitting for flesh, but it doesn't matter because Oblivion withstands Oxygen and takes map number three. Oh, I, I am telling you there at the end, it was a nice edge in terms of who would come out on top, but the wrench, the absolute monster of the performance is Xset there. Koifel preventing Oblivion from making any kind of impacts and then taking advantage of early drops from Oxygen puts them down as a duo. A quick cleanup on Rambo from Oblivion as they finally walk out and it is still a 3v2 there in the end, as close as it was. If Koifel doesn't take out one of those members of Oxygen, you have to think about the player advantage going towards that end for the final fight on Oblivion, and it could have changed the trajectory for that win. Regardless, Oblivion, congratulations to them for getting that massive victory, and congratulations to Koifel for stepping up for that exit squad. I, I, I was like, at one point in time, we were like, that wingman was going crazy from the hands of Oxygen. Of course, Koifel's last standing and still able to snake his way down into Cascades. Congratulations. I mean, dude, massive game. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it's still incredible in its Flowers. full right. And it, it's going to give Xset potentially the resurgence alongside every one of our sleeping giants who have gotten to shine today in more ways than one. Of course, Legacy making big names for themselves with their wins right at the back, but even Xset from what was taking Luminosity off in the first game to now even more directly, no cheese, no drop of an evac, just mano e mano, 3v3 here in a lone dark fail to cover the action. Come out on top. It is a resurgence for a roster that as i mean i can't i can't say it more than enough it's expectations 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 expect the unexpected no but for real let's go ahead and look at those match results and see just how that paid off for the squad 20 points on the Woo! board for oblivion 18 from oxygen which they desperately needed after two not so hot games on storm point despite the little bit of Drama over there at Barometer and Xset. They needed the points and well, they've got them. 13 overall and 11 for LG. This guy's there shoring up the remnants of KP as well. Seven and three for 10 as they round out our double digit scoring teams, at least in our top 10 placing. As we look down the board here though, I will say 11th through 20th, 
not much to say outside of Sentinels. We got to check out RKN, Oriolus, and crew as they defended the L, bidding against squads like Evolution, trying to push upon their territory. That was really tough rotations for Evolution and just getting picked off by Sentinels. But overall, it was a really strong start for them. Now we just have to get through that mid game, keep up the pacing of those eliminations, and we'll see Sentinels keep waking up. Now, Glitter, we got to get you back in here because it's been really action packed and interesting here over in the North American region. We got to hear your thoughts. Our teams came to play today. We are not seeing the same level of point sponges that we saw to me because everybody is just having these moments where they're slaying out. And were you guys making those expect the unexpected from exit type puns? Like, was that on purpose? Is that a thing? No, nah, no, nah, I was just thinking back to uh, Rain Day and Dia, 100%. <laughs> okay, just checking. Either way, it sounded fantastic. All right, but post match three obviously means it's time for us to do a little bit of a halftime show, which means we get to bring another one of our amazing guests to come on, chat with us. This time around, from complexity, we have Kimchi. I am so excited to get him on in here. Welcome wi with the cowboy drip i'm not mad how are you i'm doing great these games have been insane to say the least it looks like everyone else is on board too it's been wild from emea to this it's literally got me on the edge of my seat right fantastic fantastic performances so far and we've been asking everybody this question so you know third time's a charm we have to ask you as well we want to get your thoughts on season 20. Obviously, there's a lot coming to the game with this next season. It's going to change a lot. So I want to know if you maybe have any predictions or ideas on how you think it might uh, affect the competitive meta. Um, I think it's going to be great. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of when metas get shifted around because that's where it kind of shows like, a lot of the times you see teams that dominate in a certain meta and then the meta shifts and we see those teams start to struggle to like make the adjustments or whatever that might be. Um, and I think that's a, a big factor in what makes a team strong is how quickly can they adapt to changes in meta, whether that be gun meta or legend meta, or in this case, we got even perks coming in, which is going to be awesome. So um, I, I think we can see, I still think that a lot of the teams that are at the top will continue to stay there at the top. They'll continue to perform well and they'll just continue to build upon what they've already uh, accomplished thus far. But I think there are some other teams that maybe are just kind of in the middle of the pack right now that might, they might pull something out or the change in meta might really favor their play style. I mean, Love those it. are all good shouts, honestly. And I'm starting to think about it as I look through, you know, kimchi, Let's talk about this because you coached complexity at the <laughs> land, right? And now you're stepping into the roster, playing alongside them. Now, talk me through a little bit of that because you guys have had really consistent performances, even with that second place finish on match day three. Was there something that changed in this roster or how has it been kind of working with the team? It's been great. Um, I would say that it, it, it's it's a little bit difficult because in a way this is just a completely brand new roster mon and i definitely have that chemistry because i did coach him um and so a lot of the times we're on the same page about what we want to do and how we want to accomplish certain things or rotates or fights um and then lou as you know all the way back to the FlyQuest days you know with with zach lou and mon with the you know i'm sure everyone knows the funny fly <laughs> fly quest clip of uh <laughs> of, of them underneath what what is now currently siphon but um it's been great uh, i had you know i had i had really high hopes and right now everything is is falling into place I, I knew that mon and i would be able to figure it out and i had a strong feeling that that uh rapport that or the chemistry that mon and lou have would come back pretty quickly and i i think it, it's shown um especially leading up we didn't have a lot of time I, i'd say that time was not on our side so we had to quickly just kind of hit the lab and work really hard in scrims. And at the start, our scrim uh, results were not the greatest, but leading up to Pro League, we only did better. Each scrim day, we improved and we improved and improved. We identified mistakes and shortcomings, and we worked quickly to fix those. Um, and then we had our first game day, not the greatest. We had 
things that we still had to work out and pro league is not necessarily where we want to be learning we want to be learning in our scrims and then you know show up on game day but then we figured it out brought it back for our second game day uh and then unfortunately game or match match day three wasn't wasn't our best but i also had to 40 minutes before you know game start i had to pack all my stuff up call i called actually three different friends two of them weren't available and actually one of them also didn't have power and i just kind of shoved myself into the car called my friend he i actually pulled him out of a union meeting apparently and uh <laughs> raced over to his house set my stuff up and then just started gaming uh and during the whole time and the the lights were flickering and i thought i was about to lose power there too and it's crazy because then you went on to win immediately after all of that setup, which is it, that's a story in itself, Kim Chi. So a uh, big congratulations to you there, of course, on Complexity's performance. And between the comms, of course, and this improvement it has easily become one of my favorite rosters to watch. But I will say. I want to get your opinion. I want to get that dose of kimchi coaching here as we take a look at some of the rings from today. So, especially as we jump on over to this first one here, it felt like it was a disguised win. What happened? So, I, I'm so surprised that they were able to make it this far. Uh, this is kind of like their recipe where they, they take their time and they come in on an edge of the zone and in fact, there was actually a game where we won in World's Edge where I kept telling my team that Disguised will be coming up from the zone and we need to keep watching that. And sure enough, they showed up and we were prepared. Um, and in this case, Disguised kind of did, I think, something similar to get into the position they're in now. And then, unfortunately, it looks like Enemy just didn't catch that Bangalore swinging up on his right at that time. He caught, you know, kind of killed for free right there. Uh, Design had also run into uh, that random fence that was left behind, I think, by DNO. And then, you know, it, it's legacy, right? Yanya and Azul, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, they, and they're, they're just strong players. Triple roller, they're just doing so much damage. It is so hard to win that 2v3 as good as Timmy and Design are. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard fight to win when you're 2v3 against a roster like that. Uh, it, it comes up at least for a success of Legacy off of their first time away from that contest. But when we talk about difficulties, this seems to be a zone or a representation of one that is tough with everyone in checkpoint. Kind of lead me through what can a team do here to survive? This one is, is also rough. I was watching this and the whole time I was thinking there's just enough space and there's also not a lot of zones that end inside a checkpoint. And I was thinking Disguise is in a, in a really strong position to play from where they wanted to. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to do it. And instead, we saw, I actually really want to highlight Luminosity because it, it kind of looked very hopeless for them. Uh, but they made a great move play and were able to actually, uh, I, I think that was Gaming Gladiators that they, they might have landed on top of. Funk just went absolutely insane. Um, it was great team play from all three of them. And this this is just such a hard, hard um, position to, or zone to win. You saw Moise actually coming from the position where Disguise should have been coming from, and they won it. Um, zones like this, it, it's, keeping, it's keeping everyone on their toes for sure. <laughs> yeah, from, from back into checkpoint with the majority of our teams to deep into the embers of just really moist. Walk us through now match three. It's a Cascades ending. One, I'm sure you're more than familiar with. Yeah, so uh, this zone is a little bit more, I guess, straightforward than the, the previous ones we had. Um, game one, you know, people were kind of trying to figure out whether it's going to be pylon, could it end on the barometer side? Uh, and then game two, a lot of people thought it was going to end inside a checkpoint and then they were wrong. But this one, pretty straightforward. Um, I, Koi, was, it, it is crazy that he was able to get that kill on Bane. And I think even crazier is OXG between Reeds and Aiden. They almost clutched up the 2v3. But uh, these zones are, are, you know, we've had two that were a little difficult and then had one that was a little bit more straightforward. I'm wondering what we're going to be looking forward to in our upcoming three World's Edge games. Well, now we're taking a look here at our series results so far, halfway through the day. Now, do any of these teams jump out at you for their performance overall so far, Kimchi? Um, I'm, I'm pretty surprised by actually a lot of things, right? Um, obviously, we're seeing TSM in a spot that 
mm, we're not yeah. used to seeing them in. Um, but I, I think Zephyr had said it earlier on where they are definitely a team that can warm up, heat up, and then just kind of bring it back. Uh, and I, I think we definitely shouldn't, you know, expect them to just bring three solid games out of World's Edge and just jump them up the leaderboards. Um, I'm super happy to see Disguised. Um, Enemy is a was actually one of my first teammates and a very good friend of mine. And it's awesome to see that they were able to not just be Game Six Warlords. They're they're actually bringing the heat at the start. <laughs> it looks like Design Dumpers. Speech really got through to the team, and and it, it's doing wonders. <laughs> so that um, LG is is also staying consistent. Xset starting to you know bring it back. So. Um, it, it's really exciting right now. I think these games aren't necessarily going the way that most people think, but that's what makes it fun, right? It's boring if you just kind of know how it's going to end. All right. Well, Kimchi, it's been absolutely lovely having you on to chat with us. You're about to take all of our jobs. You crushed that. So thank you for <laughs> joining. It was an absolute blast. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And then, uh, you know, Gotta, I gotta rep the Aurora jersey for my my good friend Nine Impulse. Or if you can see the see the back, so mm -hmm. you know, hopefully, oh, see it. someone can take that that Aurora energy and bring us some solid games. Because I know I had a blast watching the boys uh, tear up EMEA earlier today. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you again, Kimchi. We'll be seeing you soon in your next play day. See you later. Thank you. The hat tip oh. and everything. Woo. What what a gentleman. Uh, what a gentleman. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we could probably talk about it forever, but we have to continue on with the show because it's not just the ALGS that has been running these last few weeks. Obviously, we started our challenger circuit as well. First one is done and dusted, and we have a winner for Challenger Circuit number one. Huge congratulations going out to Pen5. Obviously, names we recognize Hambino, Chase Mup, and Depressly coming through with that first dub here, Zephyr. Yeah, no surprise there, especially if a team that is, I will say, as tenured, but it came down to the last moments. Teams like FSS and Status Quo just as close behind them, only 10 points. All right. Another strong performance out of our Challenger Circuit moments. Obviously, though, if you want a chance to participate, you can still do that, okay? We've got registration still open. Get in one of our next Challenger Circuits and see if, if you could potentially be the next team here on ALGS. You can sign up at battlefly.com forward slash ALGS. Get yourself and your team registered. And who knows, we might be talking about you on the next show. But for now, it's time for us to say goodbye to Zephyr. Go take your well-earned break. And it'll be me and Tiff getting everybody set up and ready to go. Match number four, right around the corner. We're switching maps. Time to turn our focus towards World Edge. We heard Kimchi talking about it as well. So it'll be exciting to see what some of those more tenure squads, like you said, he called out to ASM. They got to turn it around for World Edge here. I mean, they might. We saw what they did at Champs. So if anyone can right? turn something around and make it <laughs> glorious, it's it's TSM, of course. But starting down in 20th place, they do have a long journey towards the top. But jumping on over to World's Edge, we have to start thinking historically of that Storm Point performance and even towards the future. Legacy, Moist Esports, Oblivion, your three separate winners throughout the entirety of Storm Point. Tides are turning, things are changing, Glitter. It's it's crazy over here. Some really strong performances out of all of these teams too. And even if we aren't seeing DSG up here, we need to give them a little bit of a shout too because they've had a phenomenal performance. And I think the top of our leaderboard is gonna be really hard to break into considering just how spread out and even things have actually been as we take a look here at our historical final circles so far now on world's edge specifically taking an interest in what we saw last time these two groups played against each other on match day two yeah you can see we've got that thermal station zone that luminosity went absolutely massive on that occurred in that match day number two we do have that southern point of climatizer out towards the rocks and even the railroad train line that's where that ended and then we had a dome ending that was pretty accurate
action packed. But for our teams in A and C in particular and what that looked like, Oblivion and Skirt, we kind of alluded towards that landslide contest that would mm -hmm. be happening. Now granted, they were previously landing at Lava Fissure. They made some waves over in Skyhook. They dabbled over in Fragment, but they've decided to go ahead and contest Oblivion, your match three winners over at Landslide, but also keeping an eye on Moist Esports and Nine Lies. I'm assuming that Moist will land a little more further into Big Mod and loot there while Nine Lies get stacks. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see if Moist tries to take their aggression out on Nine Lies though and kind of clear them out of that area. You can see just how many points Moist got last time around from that area. They actually did worse on Storm Point last time than they did here today, and they've already had such a strong performance that if this is how they can perform on World's Edge yet again, they're going to be terrifying. 46 points from three maps on World's Edge, and they've already got 34 at the top of the day. But Disguised, well, they're starting off a heck of a lot better for match day number five than they were. So now we turn our sights over to World's Edge, our players in the dropship, heading from the northernmost point above survey camp down through tree will be that plane line. We're we'll keeping our eyes on those contests to see if we get any of these early game engagements. And as I say that, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. A okay. and Akimbo trying to do what he can here. You've got blinks are off in the distance, and this is a little bit of a tough position to find themselves in now. Landslide looking like it is skirts. I was gonna say, you know, Akimbo did so much opening damage and Arcology grabs the gold shield alongside Blinkser and just dips. They're not running the conduit for this contest. They immediately just disengage with no hopes to being able to craft. They hit the scan to see, are we being chased? And well, while the answer is no, and knowing how strongly Oblivion has performed on the day, currently sitting in five as we head over to our final three matches, the last thing they want to do is throw this game. Absolutely. They've gotten themselves on a little bit of a snowball situation here. So they're going to play this one a little bit safer, smarter, and not force anything that they don't have to. Now checking in on a couple different places. This is what we wanted to see what was going to happen down there in stacks. But it also looks like DNO has moved towards potential area they obviously land in dome they're on the edge right now might be looking towards moist seeing what they've got over there because if i'm not mistaken that was nine lies we had seen before we jumped on over to everybody over at dome and stacks and they weren't where they are initially were going to drop Nine Lives is over there all the way at Mirage Atwa, just south of lava fissure but with the inkling of where that zone will be heading in the intersection at the bottom of Ooh. tree it gives furia hope for the future, as well as disguise priority of where this will be pulling to play from a preferential spot. That's actually huge for Moist. Now they have that whole POI, Big Mod and Stacks to themselves. And they've got a great spot to rotate into the zone from where their drop is, but also opens up Nine Lies a little bit. We'll have to see if they run into anybody on their rotations as we're now taking a little bit of a top-down look on Sentinels drop in gaming. Now we're on with gaming gladiators as they are trying to make an early push in and finding themselves coming across some squads along the way. Looks like they were trying to potentially get over to the buildings just north of Thermal, but they're definitely putting pressure down to the teams and for Luminosity dropping down on their loot path towards Mirage Atwa, already getting that knock onto a Wope and still cleaning up further. There goes Laser, there's the Thirst on to them and just really leveling up those evos but luminosity just turned on the burners when it came to world's edge on this prior groups a and c matchup and it looks like they're already starting out strong lg want to make sure they get all this extra loot for themselves they didn't want to have to share that with nine lies who are able to at least escape with their tail between their legs a little bit there to see if they can maybe survive and get some points on the board as that rat taking a look at skirt starting to make their rotation through here couple shots in the air cracking those shields furia though very close and want to push this if they can if that's where you're gonna land and take a chunk of damage you can see phoenix kits being popped shield bats as well 
Curious to see what Furia does towards the invaders of their space, but back on over to Tree. Looks like Legacy still looting up here. They could even seek to craft a bit for the teams that are still making their way out of launch site. Through the air, they come. Nothing's connecting here, but still, oh, hey, we do get it. It does happen. As long as you are persistent, all things are possible. And that's on a DNO because that was a Valk. All right, well, now we're checking in with DNO, seeing how they want to handle this. Only a little bit of damage that they had to have already healed back up and find themselves a little bit of a comfortable position here. They'll be on the nice slow side of this zone as it continues to shrink down for them. So they should be able to hold up here for a little bit and maybe get those shields evoed up just a tad while everyone else is trying to find a safe rotational path to at least get within this next zone. Hey, look, it's not a bad position. That building is where the zone essentially intersects on that southern side. So the opportunity of that zone to pull towards that building will be quite high. So DNO playing that Watson Valk Bangalore. Man, that's a interesting legend composition. And you think towards season 20, maybe they're prepping for the perks to come through and luminosity hitting their rotation just a little bit further south. They're playing the area just above that tunnel where we last saw drop-in gaming positioning themselves in. Ooh. Just looking for information at this point, kind of trying to drum up where they want to head next. You know, if, it, if LG can eke out some kills here, they will try and continue adding to their already high KP tally. Now checking in with Exit. A team that has really started to pick it up today. It's why we talked about them as one of our sleeping giants at the top of show alongside Legacy and Sentinels. Exit though, have taken on LG twice today and found success both times. You can see how far away from the zone they are, so they've got a little bit of a long road ahead of them and they are pinched between two squads, but with the way they've been playing, Ideally, they should be able to handle business. Oh, this is tough. Look, even though they intersected, it pulled south, yes, but just a little bit ahead of the building that DNO positioned themselves in. So we need to keep an eye on that because they do have to play forward throughout the next zone. But for Disguised, who typically, when they see thermal station zones, they'll play that center spire. They're going to have to rotate a little bit further east as well. But for Game and Gladiators, who have... Set up shop inside one of the buildings just kind of towards that ending that we had witnessed from match day two. That will be more akin to them. Luminosity, though, now that I think about it, this might be another banger World's Edge map. They got 20 eliminations on that end yep. game that occurred over there. So as long as you just hand sweet a wingman, just let him fly. That's what I'm saying. The slaying ability that we know that is on LG could set themselves up very nicely for success. We're seeing a couple teams really starting to lock down their position. OXG happy in those buildings, still checking in with Exet's rotation. Definitely wanting to make their way through landside as quickly as possible and try and get a little bit closer to that zone as they are one of the last teams the farthest away right now to try and get them get themselves safe. But the pro is that they don't have to worry about them, anyone coming from behind them and pinching them, but there is the potential for lots of gatekeeping depending which route they decide to take here. Moist though, we saw them for a moment doing a little bit of poke towards TSM as they were making their rotation along the southern edge, now trying to find a spot in the zone near DNO, near Legacy, and they might find themselves in a little bit of a rough fight here. Good timing there for that Radiant transfer to keep the teammates alive, but we've expended a lot of resources here. A Dark Veil, a Bang Ult, and even some smokes, but Legacy do decide to not push into where Moist is. And I respect that. We did get to see Exet on their rotation through Landslide. Right before we cut away, they were grabbing that survey beacon information, but with so many teams scattered 
a cross tree, even on the outskirts of Lava Siphon and Harvester, this will be tough for them to get a chunk of information. All right, well, we keep talking about them making this long rotation here. Let's take a quick listen in with Exit and see if they have a strategy planned. Down there. Okay. Right. Can we balloon and play up there? We might get like turbo focused on the balloon. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I think I hear fighting like harvester side. 126 white on this guy. Can we or look west. for crack house? Can we look for crack house? Move yeah. together. No. Wait for fun. Wait for fun. He's healing. Yeah. Dude, it's staging as a white armor. Okay. Anything? Scan, 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 scan. Scanning. Maybe we can get this team killed in here. Yeah. We can hear just how indecisive they are right now, Tiff. Not re really knowing which path they want to take for this exhortation. Try to see where the teams in front of them are so they can make it as quickly as possible. They tried to use a scan to get a little bit of information. Nobody was in that area to really hit it with, but they're going to have to make a push through here soon. It's really tough, right? Meanwhile, we lose out on oversleepers and meat lovers. TSM just clearing out the area on the outskirts of Lava Siphon. But I think that was a really solid call out. They were a little indecisive. That survey beacon scan is not going to give them enough information on where they need to go. Everyone is scattered. And at the end of the day, we are still going deeper into tree. So TSM are going to have that rotation through tunnel outside of Lava Siphon. Native are going to push right into that area. Xset want that survey beacon information that Harvester will behold. But at the end of the day, with everyone separated, who knows where to really go? Well, Moist do. You know, I feel like TSM look like they're going hunting right now. They have been trying to clear out all of Lava Siphon. As I say that, now they have native gaming in their sights. And I feel like this might be the moment where TSM want to try and recoup some of those missed points from the first three maps on Stormpoint. They, they look hungry. Look, they have to be. They came into this uh, with nothing to lose. But can we talk? about the legend composition here? That is new for me. We've got Caustic, we've got Raven is cooking in the kitchen right now. I've seen it on the timeline. The dude has skills and <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even talking about just legend compositions here. I'm talking about actual food. Legend compositions besides Xset, they're finally making decisions. They're hitting the choke points. We're moving forward. We just have to keep on going. You know, this was a 50-50 shot for Exit. They had seen drop in gaming in front of them in that uh, train tunnel. They decided to try and wrap through this choke instead. It looks like drop in gaming have rotated back out and now Exit's kind of back and forth trying to keep drop in gaming off their back and anybody else at the front of this choke from pushing them all the way through so they can decide how to handle it. Now checking in with OXG who are also finding themselves in this similar area, also trying to fight a lot of these teams away. As that's happening, Nine Lies goes out, LG goes out. People are starting to get cleared out of the way. And the next is going to be potentially drop in gaming or evolution because Exet has them in their sights. But the majority of the damage is on behalf of Exet because they're getting pressured from a nearby Sentinels across the way. They just have this rock and a few smokes, but no more smokes to be had. That cooldown will go into effect. We have no ult, no smokes, and we have a minute on the board to kind of get situated here. We've seen Exit run into Sentinels quite a few times so far throughout today, and it ends up being a rough back and forth every single time. Keeping our eyes still on Evolution, able to peek up and do a lot of damage. Also, other teams now focusing on Exit. I mean, this is a tough spot for them to be in. Yeah, it's Sentinels, man. From across the way, it sings. And we're losing out on more squads and Evolution now. Jumping back towards that low ground, a grab lift to get fun back into the mix and a gold knockdown for knock to be able to get fun back on their feet. Now, granted, you think back to this prior match day performance, A and C, X set with 17th overall on the day. They're fourth now. We are talking about playoffs on the horizon and we need as many points as possible for them. They have to be able to get out ahead of Evolution. Now this fight, 
is going on for a long time as well like you said you've got sentinels off in the distance tsm was somewhere in this area because they had pushed up on native gaming so there is potential for lots of third parties are they going to try and go for that evac tower or get some type of verticality we'll have to see how it plays out for x as we now look at gaming gladiators up against oxg aiden barely surviving you see gg be able to stick that res in the process getting a little bit of a reset here but now this is what i was talking about tsm been waiting in the wings the whole time they're waiting in the wings and the rotation from exit comes through koifel first to go down not the only one standing about to leave and go back to the lobby but not before evolution falls in tsm they are hunting disguise has fallen early on your second place squad the entire leaderboard cracks open as drop in gaming and exit fall tsm are about to farm and Reps on the caustic. You gotta love it. Really, really solid patient gameplay okay. out of TSM. This is what we were looking for. Cracks coming through. Two now down on Sentinels, and they knew Sentinels is in that area. TSM clean them up, stick the res, get a reset, and now own this little area of the zone. It'll give them time to decide the next push. We'll have to see if anyone tries to third them, though. Knock him down and watch him fall. Native on the horizon as TSM seek to get the stabilization needed. Just on the horizon, Niazul looking for high ground above Hal, but still able to stay out of that line of sight. Eight eliminations thus far for TSM on their journey into the top eight. Gaming Gladiators fall and Verholst grabs an amazing angle onto Native Gaming. Starting to run a little bit low on the prowler there for Verholst, but they've done a fantastic job of zoning everybody away from them. Able to restabilize, and now they kind of have the advantage here. At least if they decide to go up against Native, they do know that you've got Legacy in the area as well. So they have to be aware of that, but they try and make a little bit of a move here on Native. If they can clear them out, it'll really open up the north side of that zone for them and give them a little bit of freedom. And that's exactly what they're looking to do. They need to clear out Native because DNO has already set up inside of Truck alongside that Watson. They've fenced out the exterior. I'm sure they have a pylon just on the inside. But for GKS and Furia on that left side of your screen right now, playing just above each other, keep your eyes on to Moist as they push on to Legacy. A little bit of neighbors here on those contests that they had on prior match days. And they're performing exceptionally well now that they don't have it here. But for Jaguares and Yanya trying to climb up. And Yanya 5 HP. Waltzy trying to stay alive. The last one standing. Native falls to TSM. And Moist join them. Teams on the edge are dropping like flies. It'll be down to Furia and GKS on the western side to see which team owns that portion of the zone. Like you said, Dino, just sitting pretty in the truck while everybody else is fighting for their lives, trying to make it in to this top four situation. It'll be interesting to see who has to move first, who moves on Dino, what their choices are as this ring is just a minute away from closing in on everyone. Well, it looks like Naughty has a wingman and some high ground, but they are going to have to move in just 45 seconds. The question is, which way will they go as they dance around that Bangalore alt? And DNO just consistently throwing smokes that way. But TSM, they cleared out the space that they needed. And now we s turn our sights over to the second place squad of Legacy just unearthing as many arc stars as they can onto furia they connect but have no fear yanya still has four more those were beautiful beautiful arc stars definitely pr proving to be a pain a thorn in the side of furia and gks because they can't just focus on each other they've got to worry about legacy across the way who has some fantastic sight lines on them all while dno is just hanging out and watching it all go down tsm also waiting in the wings trying to see how they want to handle it it's down to anybody's game it's time to move in and the first fight looks like it's between furia and gks 
and they wall and immediately go left trying to get out of the line of sight of legacy who give them an open season and try to wrap around on them furia still alive but will be pushed on to gks tsm have set their sights on to dno gaming and playing for truck and furia barricades forward that initial knock on to naughty cleans up gks but now they have to deal with legacy who have essentially mirrored their positioning that was incredible. Legacy going for that fight of Fury opened up TSM to continue having this fight with DNO. It's taking a little bit longer than planned. Burholz is down, Reps is almost out. House last one alive, they're not able to make it work. DNO still holding that truck soundly, and now it's down to Legacy to see what they can do with it. And they're getting shield swaps. Yanya makes the push on to DNO, gets incredibly cut down quick. Senox opening the door for the squad. Yaguaris from above, a little bit of a rogue Watson. And Niazel brings it to that 2v2. We go inside with all the fences. Jaguaris finds another, and it's just a little bit of dupe left standing. And Legacy, they do it. Your map one winners bring it forward into map four. That was a phenomenal performance. I wasn't sure how it was going to go because Legacy had to choose between trying to third TSM and DNO or trying to third Furia and GKS. They went for the farther fight, went past TSM and DNO, tried to clean it up first farther away. It worked out fantastically. It also allowed TSM to be taken out and then they made a really, really good push in to clean it up. I mean, this is the legacy we were hoping for. You know, I said it earlier, but they're definitely orgless. Just letting you know. Just letting you know. They're Just keep reminding people, there. seriously. Any orgs out there? Any orgs out there want a really killer squad? No, but regardless, it was a really solid play. Now, granted, they were playing from that center of tree, and as soon as GKS and Furia went left and started focusing on each other, it allowed Legacy to just swoop behind and it's clear out everything ahead of them. Now, I do respect TSM for taking that push onto DNO at the truck, because at the end of the day, that is where the circle was pulling. And if you could have vicked them out of there, you would have had the game winning spot and you would have faced off against Legacy. Now, granted, it didn't really happen, but the caustic, very respectable. Honestly, I loved seeing it. It also definitely helped TSM when they were kind of in that open low ground needing to decide do we focus on legacy do we push native and clear them out and open that space up it made that open area their open area moist ended up distracting legacy so it was a perfect opportunity for tsm to really make that push up um but i'm hoping that this variety is obviously a preview of what we start seeing moving towards season 20 we've heard a few of the players talk about it now potential lots more of legend viability we do have a couple of weeks just before we see that next match day after season 20 drops on february mm. 13th so everyone's talking about hitting those scrims and we know it's going to be just an all-out chaotic mess but as we look forward towards the match four results 22 points on the board for legacy which matches their map one performance with 22 points and even though TSM do not take the win, they hit double digits eliminations, giving them 17 points. I mean, they were just farming people on the edge of the zone, so very well deserved in the kills department for TSM. This is the comeback. We all knew they were possible. That was possible for them. Kim Chi said it. I mean, we've all mentioned it. We've seen TSM do this time and time again. Sometimes they just like having that added pressure, and it's just, it's only on a day. They turn on to World's Edge, and they turn up their gameplay, but Across the board, more kills pretty evenly spread out from there. Moist nailing down six. I mean, even Game of Gladiators all the way down there at, in ninth was still five kills. So people really managing to at least get those points on the board, including drop in gaming. That was a really impressive game for them, despite going out in 12th place. Exit, unfortunately, got caught out, disguised early on, rotating out of thermal, only able to grab two points for them in luminosity. The tough, tough performance. They were trying to play from essentially by that tunnel on the outskirts of Thermal, but not able to make it through. Regardless, we can only start to think about what the series results are to be had. It's anyone's game for this day. And the way zones have been pulling, it's so... I don't even have any thoughts, man. Right? How are, how, how, how are these working? Like, how are these zones working? I, I, I don't... I thought that was your department, honestly. That 
don't know. No. I retired after Amiya when it comes to predicting zones. All right, well, let's let's take a look at some stats here because Legacy had such an insane performance. We want to look at the individual players as well and talk about even across the board. Sure, the kills might not look even. It's not about the kills. That's just whoever finished it off at the end, okay? You still have almost identical damage across all three players here to have everybody pulling their weight. They definitely are, and you would immediately look to Yanya and be like, why only one elimination? Well, that's because he's got five assists. They are all playing as a cohesive unit, and it just goes to show you that's why they're finding so much success. And it, it was needed because you look back to where they started or where they're currently sitting on that overarching leaderboard, 21 tied with Native on 18 points, and the top 12 are what go to playoffs. But for the series results, hey, they're at the top, Glitter. So the and 25 points is on the horizon for them if they can maintain this. Yeah, and they keep doing this too where they're so consistent that they've got even placement points, even with their kills. They've just really brought it today. They win the first match on Storm Point. Now they win the first match on World's Edge. So they have just been a powerhouse today, but Moist Esports, another team that's done very well. DSG, look at Exet. We talked about our Sleeping Giants legacy now at the top. Exet here in fourth. I mean, we've seen so many of these teams do well. Sentinels, not with the placement points, but still starting to get some KP on the board. They just had a little bit of a rough go of it so far. I mean, I feel like we're seeing lots, lots of the performances, though, that we were expecting. Well, you're not wrong. All right, well, before we get into any more matches here today, we're going to send it to another short break when we return at matches five and six to close out the NA region. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Legends. It's match day five, and we have two more games on World's Edge to go. But I got Zephyr back with me to call all the remaining match actions. And Zephyr, we got to get into this pretty quickly. TSM are working on that redemption Woo! arc as we look at our map rotations. Legacy, the two-time winners here for our series thus far. Hey, and to be fair, we're potentially towards that bonus point territory if they can pick up another additional win. And for a team that needs overall points more than anyone else, that is something they should absolutely be hunting for. It's kind of wild because it's so rare for teams to get that bonus point that I start to forget that it even exists. But one more map is needed for that squad. It's kind of crazy what happens when you don't have the contest on Storm Point. You find yourself at the top of the leaderboard, but our teams, they're getting locked and they're ready to drop. All right, well. Some of the first drops we'll have to wait and see here, especially with the starting fights at the beginning of the match off. Interesting enough, 
Nine Lies appear to have changed up their position mm. on where they want to go, keeping people on their toes. And by people on their toes, I mean Sentinels. <laughs> Well, we'll see if Sentinels can find some sort of response, as made mention regarding some of our sleeping giants from earlier. The only one that hasn't woken up just yet, kind of hitting the snooze here. You blame him. I love hitting the snooze, Zephyr. I set about six to ten alarms per day, so no snooze for Zephyr. Why do you have six alarms then if you don't snooze? Um, To wake up. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll let it slide. We'll let it slide. And as we see, we're getting a beautiful look at where all of our squads have positioned themselves. Meat lovers in their home of Climatizer. They do have that ring console available should that work for them. If you're match five pick rates at the very top, 20 Bangalores across 20 squads for a 100% pick rate. And I start to think about the perk trees for season 20. Heal up. The healing. The healing and smoke. Zephyr, think of the resets as uh. we get a good look at a luminosity edged zone. I, I cannot begin to imagine. I Granted, it's not going to be a really intense heal. Like you're not barely going to find yourself more than potentially a syringe or two, maybe at the end of it. But it's the difference, right? And for some squads, that's all they need here. Granted, though. Changes to the Digi next season make Bangalore, albeit, yes, a stronger defensive option, not as good aggressively. I was trying to think, where is Oblivion? Did they go Fragment instead of contesting at Landslide? Because now Skirt has already made their way into Countdown. That's right, I was about to say Skirt early rotation, surprisingly here. Well, either way, uh, Oversleepers are going to be the ones to start action, even if it isn't near a POI and with an evac right in front of JP. Come on, take some, take some shots. No. Nah, they're not going to, but regardless, Oversleepers have put themselves in a position overall that's very far ahead of where they originally performed on this first group matchup. They were in oh! 20th place and currently sitting in 13, and you asked for him to take the shots and take the shots he will. Vaudery with one down. That's going to cause the response to drop back here. A wasted evac, but Charmander stepping up to play with JP. Both are quickly eliminated. None other by chaotic much. It's actually scary when you start to think about it. The piercing spikes come through straight towards the jump tower, and Vaudery has to try and get out of there, Aww. but unfortunate for them, Chaotic goes for a massive team wipe onto them. <laughs> After what could have been an explosive start from tracking the evac to even then the recovery with a sentinel in the sky, Oversleepers are out in 20th, which is a, a bit of a shame regarding their success. It still overall is an improvement compared to previous days, but with one game left on the board, there's still the chance for so many of our lower ended teams to snatch that away. We were asking about Oblivion and our sights are set on, okay, Akimbo. We want to level up our Evo shields. I completely understand here using the triple take to the best of their abilities. We don't really get to see too much triple take gaming here. And when you've got Arcology on the longbow as well, you gotta have to farm up specifically because we lost our POIs. We were sitting on triple white and trying to find a home here in countdown with our neighboring teams such as Skirt. <laughs> We'll see what they can do here, especially with their zone catering more towards that lava fissure side. Countdown being the intermediary choice still isn't exactly where you want to be with most of those teams towards the northern end of that zone tending to choke things out. TSM opting for deeper rotations towards the southern side here. Do they cook again? Or, I mean, I'm assuming. We look at their, they can have any bit of the information that will be at staging. Staging has crafting, it has a ring console, it has a survey beacon. So let's get all of it. Because if Reps is back on Caustic, you have access to the ring console. If we've got the Bloodhound, you get the survey beacon and crafting is everything that you need before you head up north towards that countdown area. We're just kind of hovering over meat lovers as they make their way through Fragment and onwards towards Monument. Ooh to the hunt visuals available as awans will take back up to height as well here second floor completely taken out and away from meat lovers underneath it is choking but ultimately they can always dip out and dodge 
whenever they feel like it. They could, but a, a nice smoke hmm. for the armor check will show blue and white. No turbocharge on that Havoc, so we just kind of want to rev it up and see what happens. Nine lies on the bottom of the floor. Yes, they were able to kind of anchor off this doorway with that Arc Star early on, but I'd imagine that Meat Lovers are trying to kind of go silent before approaching onto it. Awope and Co. death balling together. We talk about the power of friendship, and this is exactly what it is, <laughs> but an incoming Bloodhound scan will give up the information. I mean, this, I know we're in zone one, so while yes, spacing is available, it is a bizarre choice to extend this one out as long as it has gone on for either one of these teams. Granted, with little time on the board to put up points, a good fight, a good 3v3, a good 3kp, that can be the difference maker. If I'm reading this correctly, I don't think meat lovers have actually gotten any eliminations today the four points come from placement so they maybe are looking to take an early fight and an early fight indeed here for Woo! disguise as they open the door on to legacy and getting that knock on to haguaras designful able to stay up with one hp and a dream but going back into the high ground here at thermal switching me he's doing it he's Bo doing the thing <laughs> i was gonna say bocek arc star uh, just barely trains that one away as we bop on over to meat lovers here seems like the fight had started behind a knockdown tech with just a sliver of health left has to make his way out quickly turning out and away here but with catalyst doors down now you should be able to get out it's just a really tough day here for meat lovers and they look to kind of get out of there like you said disguised back up here enemy overlooking them i love the drop down looking to grab that ring information once they've realized that legacy has just decided not to take this fight but when you have so many titans hanging around that area of zone even tsm has dropped down south of staging after getting some information because they're looking to farm kp which is exactly what they need to do they went from 20th to 10th after map number four but they still have some more climbing to do because just ahead of them, a 10 point gap is approximately third place. Woo. An insane jump potentially for this roster if they can find it. It was tuned back towards the zone. We're going a little bit more further south than Lava Fisher, notably towards the open area, potentially where we see DNO currently stationed. We love to see those bridge finishes for teams contest for that low ground later on. <gasps> for Moist though, they'll find TSM. They are playing spoiler to TSM's redemption arc of match day number five. And just like that, Hal joins Verholst on the ground. We're just looking for the lone member of reps, the caustic that was able to slow the push from Guild and allow him just a bit more safety, but straight into the line of fire from what is drop-in gaming. Now there's a lot of spots down in the fissure to hide things out and you might see rep survive here but this is not the place tsm want to be if they're looking for a points resurgence and we can't count them out game six always holds potential fruitful opportunities but especially with the compositional change getting reps and bear or my apologies getting hal and verholz back into it is seemingly impossible look it's really tough to start talking about game six wins here when disguised is in the lobby got a hundred percent win weight rate for game number six so keep your eyes on them meanwhile We'll take a turn, check in with Native Gaming, currently 12th overall on the day and playing from the south side of Skyhook. They still have a bit of a rotation ahead of them and Moist have set their sights on their next victims of drop-in gaming. I, I like that, victims, because it really does feel like they have no choice in the matter of murder. Down is Crook, completely eliminated. Waltzy with the heels of a Radiant Transfer will keep the pressure of Moist alive and they don't even, well, don't even move very far here just below the behind the dark veil this is gonna tick away shortly here meat lovers has fallen tech was found out by nine lies waltzy taking his position at the top of the rock you know when we start to think about being on top of rocks we think of mt with the kraber on land 
something that we want to see again. For now, we get a look at where that ring will be pulling towards the dead center outside of countdown outside of landslide Jeez. and here we go moist esports eviscerates drop in gaming they don't even make it look hard here a quick cleanup in the 2v3 with a horizon that puts them right back up to where they want to be when we talk about the rotation ahead here into the cart the open cart in this line they're going to have probably one of the most premier edges of zone to play from with most of our teams rotating out from the north from countdown and fissure as we start looking at some of our teams outside the zone that need to get back in nine lies just able to waltz it in but when you've got no. a team playing top tower well that's exactly what's going to happen the Dark Veil does come through to try and bide some time to hit the res, but it doesn't matter because Clay, Rambo, and Co., they are hungry for action. Clay with the initial pushes to drop through the Dark Veil leads to the end of nine lies. As, well, they don't survive as Legacy themselves stuck in the same edges of zone is picked up by none other than Moist. Another set of KP to King. All right, so we tune in to Lava Fissure. A lot of these teams will have to hit that rotate, but they're not gonna know it yet until that zone essentially pops up on their screen in about 19 seconds. But for Exet, who are currently sitting in fourth place, need to start fighting ahead. Now we think of that gap, 18 points separates them from the top of the leaderboard and Legacy has fallen early, which will essentially crack it open for teams like Moist Esports and Disguise to make a play for it. They've got time to spare, though, on the edge of Fissure, and decisions will be made later on for the likes of Native Gaming, though. Struggling here. They've got to come through and find a way against what looks to be Sentinels. Pillars and a gold knockdown shield, though. That's a, that's a strong response. We get Rambo back on their feet. But the issue is the full comes through. We have to see if we're going to be able to hit that res and go forward. But for GKS, they peek out, start putting some pressure towards native, but they get punished instead. Forcing out the Radiant Transfer and a few Shield Bats, which we just have a couple of them. For Evolution here in 19th place, over. And the remnants of Countdown going up against Skirt, who also need as many points as possible and an isolated 3v3 on their side. We just have to take this fight as quickly as possible. It's gonna be hard. Pylon in play with the Watson fence line makes it almost impossible, even if they are peeking out of the door for free. Evolution are gifted a free set of damage here with the unnatural, I mean, exchange. This is absurd. Skirt has fallen thanks to Evolution. Some well needed KP elsewhere. Reps was found. TSM down. Furia playing from Mirage, which they're going to have a rotation ahead of them, and they do oh. immediately take the zip. But Madness has fallen. It's Timmy from afar with the Hemlock, but dives back down to hit a very quick reset with that gold knock. Will they be able to get them up in time? They do. And now with the ring at their back. Teams like Furia, Disguised, DNO are all going to be running into each other, but not even before that. Oxygen and Exit from the north. Furia with wall down is going to put them potentially in preferential positioning if they can be the sole team to contest this train line. I like the energy barricades, but Watson dives to the low ground and gets into the midst of Disguise. Whether it be an accident or a successful wipe here, it means we're down to one or two, my apologies, remaining here. Well, now one. <laughs> you were just telling the future, it's True. okay. And even with the Radiant transfer to try and keep Watson alive on the low ground, it's just too little. 
too late. And Oxygen, who returned to their home on Barometer here on Storm Point for World's Edge. They've got the Titans of Exit ahead of them. Teams that needed to awaken to try and keep their playoffs dream alive are doing just that. But off screen, Sentinels has fallen. Koi, though, 5 HP and a dream. At least not get some shields and is able to throw down some suppressive cover for them with fun. A knockdown well needed. The incoming frag grenade slaughter. Koi, there's just only so much you can do. At least a double knock picked up in the heat of disguised here, but finding your way through those frags, always a difficulty. As we look towards the bridge, Dino struggling over on the edge of the fence line with the minor cover they have themselves. GKS on the complete outskirts here to the east. After that, an early fight there where they picked up three eliminations. They just keep on grinding throughout for DNO Gaming, even with going the distance and getting that second place on match number four. They weren't able to really have too many eliminations alongside of it. What they do, though, is clean out Luminosity. This is potentially the game Moist have been waiting for from big points already on the board to a gap of first. This might be their day. Disguise dropping to the low ground, though, is quick to meet their makers when it comes to DNO. They've laid stake and claim to the low ground here for a long winded time. And while they will find now 4KP, can they do it again against Gaiman? Oh, Louis goes down. And now one last standing. When DNO sends the missile swarm forward, we just run. We have to get into that next zone, but DNO will have an easy waltz straight into it. And speaking of waltzing, look where Waltzy from Moist is. Just extending out, looking for KP, grav lifting towards the top with the nemesis, only the dark veil to cover those remaining squads over there. He's got to be a little careful here with DNO starting to heal up and at least crest what is the low ground height of that train line. MT and Guild keeping things safe. Gaiman though, native of course in GKS on the interior here. All minced meat at the hands of these energy weapons, bullets and more. We literally just tuned in a DNO who had one elimination already up to seven and into the final four squads. GKS, native. DNO and Moist. And with Moist holding a large amount of space on this zone, they have to push forward. Let's jump into a listen in with Moist. 170 energy, and I've got 50 uh, light, okay? Yeah, I've got team have to move. Text light, text light, text light. I hear you. This team's moving. They're going, they're pushing up a cabin again. They're fighting it. I'm looking with you, I'm looking angles. They have to come out. They watch. It's two teams, okay. one on the left, one on the right. We shoot them into, we have to shoot these guys into the other team. Where can we play after this, though? We just keep walking it up. We force these guys like back here. We need what about these guys? What are you doing? I need to use my cardinal armor. Yeah, you might need to use your cardinal armor. These, these, guys? these guys are starting to pick me. I'm staring these guys. They're in the caravan. Smoked. They're going to run out soon. Running out. Weak. I might bang on them. I cracked them. I cracked them. I'm bang on you. I'm bang on you. Frying the team on the left. Nice. Just shoot them. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Go left. Yes, 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 yes. Up 60. They're picking. They're picking. I'm backing up. I'm weak. I'm weak. I'm weak. Heal me, 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 I'm getting range. wingman. I'm batting. I'm playing on guild. We, we can play time, play time, play time. I have to bat. No, no, no. I have to get out. I have to get out. I have to get out. I'm getting caught it all down. I'm, I'm just, I'm literally just waiting, okay? I'm on the right staring at me. I'm dead. You, I have a knockdown to play if you need to. Yes. I got caught it all down. Knock. Coming over. No, it's bad. It's bad. It's so bad. It is so... Bro, go give back. Me up, give, me up, give 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 me up. Give me up. Not cool. We get a lot of information there, but their comms are crystal clear. But as we move into that end game, that dark veil will fall soon. And just like that, Moist have fallen. GKS, DNO Gaming, your last two teams, and Naughty trying to stay alive alongside Chaotic here. A beautiful knockdown shield to give them the advantage, but the damage plays into DNO's favor. From behind, finds first knock, switching over to the Prowler, isn't able in the end. GKS, your winners of game five. That is going to be a massive game for GKS because when you think back to the start of their match number five, they run in and Chaotic grabs a massive 3KP early on. And from there on, it's like the fire was lit for that squad.
I'll tell you what, the fire was lit in the form of many thermites when we talk about the caravan, as Moise say there, pushed up from not only them, but also the remnants of native as well. I have no idea how this roster manages to survive, wait it out, wipe Moist, and then turn tail and wipe DNO. And it's pretty crazy because you think back to prior to match number five, GKS was in 15th place. DNO was in 14th place. So your top two finishers needed as many points as possible. But the large majority of the points that were had were in the form of Legacy, who were sitting in first place with 50 points after having two wins, which opened the door for the point sponging, because at that point in time, TSM was in 10th with 21 points, and 11 points would have put them into the top three. So I can only imagine what this is going to look like for the teams that find themselves a little bit further down on the leaderboard, but performed insanely well. Yeah, the big one to watch out for this time around is going to be Moist. Even though they don't walk out yeah. with that win there, with Legacy faltering early on here and them even still making it there, but more importantly, wiping three, four, five squads in the meanwhile should be enough to eclipse our standings. I think all three of those squads, Moist, Legacy, not Legacy, Moist, DNO, and GKS, double digit eliminations. I I'm going to go ahead and call it. I think they all three had double digit eliminations. Well, it'll be pretty close. Let's take a look and see how those standings fall here after our game five. And if Tiffany is right when it comes to the double digit prediction. Oh, I was close. I was close. GKS on 14 with our biggest match of the day, 26 points. DNO with eight eliminations, 17 points. And Moist, 11 with 18. You know Jeez. what that means. We're going to have a new leader. New we leader. Are with no legacy on the board here and 18 points to push Moist forward. They should be the dominant, dominant factor coming out of this game. Native still in gaming. Respectable games at nine and eight and disguised despite falling outside the top five, pick up eight of their own. Let's jump on over to the back half of our lobby. TSM grab one, Skirt grab one as well, even Evolution on four nine lives despite falling outside the top 15 do pick up a few points but man the back half of this board for match number five is pretty scarce i was about to say it comes pretty much just down to what feels like the placements alone for so many of these rosters i mean your prediction for double digits wasn't quite true but in terms of the sponge of kp that those three teams alone were picking up that's enough to eliminate whatever kind of scoreline any one of these teams were looking for in our penultimate match Let's go ahead and look at our kill leaderboard for the day. Waltzy on 15, Koifel just having a dominating performance tied alongside them. But it's Guild. You got two of the top fraggers in the top three from Moist Esports, but even disguised Enemy and Timmy close behind them. Yeah, no surprise there, especially after how many end games we've seen them in. And of course, Legacy not faltering with their participation alongside their two wins here. Let's jump on over to series results and see what has shaken up Moist have unseated Legacy for the performance on the day with one only match to go. 61 points on the board for them. GKS though, this is a performance that they needed because you think back to what they did on that prior match day two. Last time we saw groups A and C, they were in 10th overall. So really dominating for them, even disguised in the top five. And this is important morally for GKS because right now the overall standings puts them somewhere at the cusp of at least hosting one of those playoff spots. Finishing a day like this up in the top three or even the top five is enough to keep them competitive or even potentially take away some of the spots from those who have been faltering. Things are definitely shaking up especially after this A and C matchup. We are gonna cut to a quick break. And then when we come back, we will have the final match of groups A and C.
Welcome back to the Apex Legends Global Series. Our final match of match day five on the horizon and the last one before the changes of season 20. It's gonna Ooh. be crazy, Zephyr. Can you believe it, man? We're one. already done and dusted. One more. One more is then we will move on to the final series of our second round robin where those teams will have to match up and face the roses and I, I suppose smell them as well, whether they are bad or good. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Well, enough about that map rotation on the board here. Legacy still have one more chance to grasp those coveted bonus points. And when I say bonus points, I mean one. But regardless, that would still be nice for them. But they have to go ahead and throw it all down on the line to get back to that 25 point first place helm that Moist Esports took over after match five but it is the final day before a little bit of a break here for the ALGS season. These two weeks will be filled with time, practice, and more here. And if you are absolutely sure in yourself, your performance, and your understanding of Apex, this is your last, and I truly mean it, your last opportunity to come out on top before the world comes a knocking. As our teams take their patterns down to the path. The question is, where do our teams go? We've had a lot of teams popping around and this time, well, Nine Lies, they have decided to drop into Countdown alongside Evolution. Shift out from the edge, but it does come with the delay of, well, Evolution taking held to the middle with some of those extra shielding in play and potentially as well. We'll see if they continue the onslaught and make the push towards the other end with Tynasty just finally regrouping with this roster after missing out on the opportunity to, well, I'll say capitalize. They immediately hit the crafter. Don't blame them. Want to get those shields leveled up as quickly as possible. When you start to encroach on evolution territory, you're denying them the ability to open up that center of countdown and get the shields. But Eurice and Voodoo, look, they are slowly, steadily walking over towards that Nine Lies squad. Yes, other side here for the double pincer tactic. Notably, there is no bridge available for the direct cross. Would be forced to drop on this rotation if necessary. And you can already see Yaz doing that to try and close this gap to give Evolution what they need in terms of kicking things off. Playing straight off the scan and a Thermite and Arcstar for the doors. But the boys have met back up, giving Yaz the Digi threat alongside the Bangalore smokes. But eight more seconds until we get another smoke forward. But it doesn't matter. Yaz still looking for any angle they can throughout. But this is taking quite a bit of time. And I can only imagine another team's going to want a piece of this. We know x -Hat is nearby. Whether they get involved is only seconds away. Shots from the other side, though, as a Wope is the first to find Nox dashing out from the exterior angle, but is quickly picked up just as clean as that was from x -Hat. Here come the sleeping giant sitting on purple, gold, blue early on. They definitely have the armor advantage when it comes towards nine lies, and they are comfortable with everything they were able to pick up in Skyhook. Even so much as so, Fun Pops Beast of the Hunt Love this. flies forward, lets it rip, and just completely hits for flesh. The follow through from Koi sends Voodoo down to leave just one Yuris on the flyway here towards Landslide and both, if not all of them, bloodlust curdling in the air, shots from afar and the 2KP to reward themselves. Look, that's what they needed, right? Like we start to think about where they were on that board and they've got some points to get and script writers have some scripts to write for TSM towards that Lava Siphon zone as we will be heading that way. <laughs> this feels like one of those days though, Tiff. Even with the scripts as glorious as they are, it has been a tough, and I really mean it, tough road for the TSM boys here. They've got themselves southern position, but this is looking to be one of those splits when we talk about the zone pull catering, maybe even a little bit further down towards where you see DNO, Legacy, and Moist. 
It is true, but on the prior match day performance, TSM did end out in that sixth place. But with NA having 12 slots for LAN, TSM have nestled themselves after three prior match days tied with Luminosity for second on the overall scoring. For teams that still need to work their way up, like Legacy sitting in 21st, a match day win would do so much for them. We do know, though, that for Moist that have set themselves up well going into this final map, they sit just a 10 or so points ahead of second in a 20 plus difference between themselves, third and fourth. If it, it ain't legacy, it is going to be almost what feels insurmountable for GKS or Disguised to do. And with where the zone was pulling that we just checked in with as we kind of look across the skies at all of our teams, Moist having big mod with a ring console. There's also a survey beacon over there. You can drop down to dome to either get crafting and more information before waltzing your way straight in through launch site. But a few teams meandering around GKS, positioning themselves on the further northern side of Lava Siphon and a little Charmander to go through alongside JP. Waiting for his evolution, potentially at some point. I will say, I don't think they'll find it in Geyser of all places. The slow rotate out from the west of that can be arguably just disgusting if they don't maybe opt for big mod. For Moist, I love this. Set upon what is crafting in Dome, they'll be able to walk their way into the south side of zone where we think is ending with the best resource in sustainment of any other roster out there in the heat of, well, delivering a North American win. I like how I was talking about them being able to have access to so many beacons and information, but they are one of our teams that are running a comp where you can utilize neither. No information, just your fighting power. They don't need it. What are you talking nah. about? They're doing just fine. They find the enemy uh, in front of them. There's shots everywhere. That means there's a guy there. <laughs> Listen for the audio cues when we get that next zone pull and we pull deeper into mm. launch site. So Legacy have really solid positioning around that center zone. Luminosity finds themselves sandwiched between TSM and Legacy, which is a little tough for them. Teams like Oxygen kind of going for a negative rotation. I know Enemy was putting some pressure onto them a little bit early on. We'll have to keep an eye on them. Now, when we talk about this zone pull, I do look once again, as I'll say, towards DNO with that platform in play. Sometimes you get that split between the valley and the minor bit of height it provides. Another good place to note is as much as it is difficult with the amount of teams in Lava Siphon, playing that fence line towards the south, just outside of TSM's building, can also be great if you are the sole remaining team who comes out on top of the stack. We kind of keep checking in with our squads hitting their rotation. I do like disguised positioning here in tree. They did have access to a crafter. There is a console there that you can deny. But any team taking towards the skies becomes open season as everyone just immediately positions up, meat lovers included. We really need a big game here for the boys, Tech, Awans, and Luxverdy. But Blinkster and Arcology, they do land. They're looking for a little bit of a reset here and Ooh. maybe more of a reset because oh. now look who's on the hunt. GKS after a standout performance in map number five, but they're not the only ones. Exit immediately move into Lava Siphon, break their door and take their position. I love this. I mean, this is perfect tactics in play here. And it will, it will be the end of Oblivion as we know it, but for GKS, they immediately find out they've lost everything and more. Now going to be having a contest or a fight back into the positions of play ahead here. And, and that kill feed, that's something we've been waiting to see. TSM, one of the first major eliminations of the day. Skirt here. They've cleared out a vital spot towards that next zone. Essentially the sister building to the building that Xset has set themselves in just on the southern side. A little bit more closer and in towards that next zone that we need. 
checking back over towards Moist, still trying to find their way out of that Stax Dome area, getting some information towards Tunnel. Now, mind you, we just talked about it. They don't have a scan legend. They just got to use their brains and their aim. Honestly, I think just clearing out their back and, and making sure a team like Sentinels or what we just saw from Oversleepers on their now uh, opposite rotate is the smartest thing for Moist to do here, right? They put pressure down. They become that last remaining team out from the Southern Dome side. And then while, yes, they will have to find their way into a successful fight towards the platform and more, I mean, it's better than being, well, among this, like meat lovers, stuck on the low ground. We've learned from Star Wars that the low ground is not where you want to be. So we're working our way back up thanks to this zip here. And we just ambush on the res. I really do like the way this squad is approaching this between the zip, between the grand lift, throwing out a lot of ordnance, bringing in the ultimates, and A1 still holding on to that black hole. But back to the low ground they go. A1's cracked on the other side, sticking the start of the battery there is from the death building over towards the south. They take shots from native, and this is the reset Oversleepers were looking for, but not quite the recipe for what should be some hopeful fight success. Zip lines in play, and now, I mean, that's, that is a, that's a screaming get up here move from meat lovers now. That's the sound of a Moby. Here we go, Awans with the grab lift towards the top. Does it commit the black hole just yet? We want to make sure it's the right time and meat lovers. The shield regens come through. Tech with the hip fire on the Havoc. We're able to get the knock on to Vaudery. The Fool comes through in a shield swap for Tech. Fight's not done, job's not over. Charmander has the low ground now and the dance begins. Needs to get out towards that next zone. Time is of the essence. But they're not done. Awan's putting on that pressure, trying to finish it off. 23 seconds on the board with Valley in play out in the open for so many of our teams. When we talk about this next zone, it doesn't get much better in terms of the official rotations. When we talk about this, guys are here. Sentinels in the perfect perfect position to send the oversleepers home. They've been out and they've been waiting. Charmander just hit the firing squad of Sentinels, let's be real. And now they set their sights on their rotation with minimal time remaining. The last we saw on this trajectory for the rotation that we're witnessing here was Moist Esports on the outskirts. They're still going to have to walk their way into zone. The question is, will there be someone to stop them? DNO is on at least the platform. Moist, they've got their own issues with Furia ahead. And Waltzy goes down. If Moist falls here in game number six, Legacy is poised in a position already in launch site, closest towards that zone to make a play for the top of the leaderboard, which is exactly what they need to keep the playoffs dream alive. Guild and empty. Dynamic duo, not gonna be able to recover that banner. Have decided to set their sights forward, but Furia, they're not done with Moist. They got one, they want more. Madness still out angling, playing forward, looking for any more damage. But as Moist hit the rotation, they run into the line of sights of so many other squads. And down below, ain't much better earlier. There's many teams that love to play from underneath the platform, and especially this zone here for Moist. They've got to make a choice. There's no cover to work with, so you might as well try to fight for your squad. Sentinels, though, finally moving into the action against Furia might be the answer they're looking for here. One bad fight, one incorrect cleanup, and they could potentially make their way back in. Heck, with good timing, maybe collect Waltzy, but... Oh. I was gonna say, could they go through and back? But Furia turns their attention back to Moist, immediately takes them out. Now looks for a little bit of a regain here before setting their sights on another squad. But Sentinels has enough of their own issues at hand because as soon as Sentinels start looking at Furia, Legacy pops out from launch site. And now we've got an entire other brawl that Furia can third party. It's a tough spot for Fury to be in, getting inside to the fence line there. DNO, team that has been on heavy defense with those Watsons. 
will be an issue for them. Sentinels, they themselves had made deeper moves into launch site in the meanwhile here and might be facing their end. Hazel with a great wipe on one and now looking for revives. If Legacy fall here, they could slip down the leaderboard. We lose our chances at a potential bonus point for winning three maps. But Zenile and Niazul in one of the biggest 1v1s for Legacy with one HP. Mm. Legacy clutch it and send Sentinels packing. I don't think this gets much better for them though with zone closing in at the just worst time here. It is unlikely that Legacy make it further in terms of those high end game positionings as a single member left standing. It is gonna be having, a, this is the, the rat game of a lifetime. Drop in gaming. Cooking over there by the respawn, the mobile at hand, X set playing between such a thin line, threading the needle, putting the black hole down and trying to shoot essentially fish in a barrel for them. But as soon as they peek out, they get pressured from afar Ooh. and just into the top five and Arkstar, a little bounce on me around. You know they're screaming safe on me, safe on me. I'm out of the line of sight from that Arkstar. Meanwhile, this is not the place any one of these teams need to be in disguise. Oxygen drop in TSM sharing space is the worst in this next zone here. We talk about that northern fence line in terms of play. You have a very minor set of height among our official Apex banners that are set on the edge of that hillside. That's it. Every one of these squads currently playing in, even X set who's playing upon but a slice of a pie. I would dare say that literally just the crust. Everyone will have to move. Oh no, all of the teams from Lava Siphon. We turn our attention towards TSM going up against Oxygen, which is a massive fight for both of these squads. We lose Hal. Reps does get the shields back to full form, but the Conduit ult is barricading them from moving right. They're still focused towards the left. The swing comes out. Not able to get the full just yet. We do have to keep an eye on the rooftop and they do just that. The Skynade comes through before Verholst oh. looks to take a quick peek. Doubles down from the outside. We'll have to check in with them later because GKS is on the complete opposite side. I like this, taking their time. They wanna make sure that if they are to be the ones to play from height, they're the last ones to do so here. Exit in their own right, losing out to drop in gaming leads me to believe that this is that final roster here with fights ahead, utility down. It's that perfect moment for them to smoke up, walk in, and potentially start to mop things up. The janitor crew. Wow, squads are falling left and right. Legacy One. disguised, now exit. Will it keep on going as GKS racks up even more eliminations, oxygen to fall? A solid Thermite there with Native eliminated as a result, popping up to one around the corner. They might miss out on a bit of damage, but they'll still find drop in gaming in the end. TSM to one on the other side, gaming gladiators to another here. And GKS still looking to clean out their side of zone. They find Nano and just like that, gaming gladiators has fallen into the final five. A big 3v3 here about to occur with DNO isolating themselves inside of the building and Furia towards the outskirts. The issue is, if Furia decides to push in towards that building that DNO will have to leave eventually, Luminosity is likely to push into this and third party it. Those zip lines are right below this and it gives them that perfect moment to come on up there. And for GKS, this is everything they want and more here. Only but I believe six or seven points off potentially usurping Moist on what could have been their win. All they have to do is wait. And wait they shall. Fury did the same for DNO to exit the building. They're able to find some shield cracks, but we look over that horizon with Luminosity just underneath them. Keon is focused on Senox. Watson is scouting. DNO's on the low ground alongside Luminosity and GKS is on the other side. We expend out the Bangalore ult, but if GKS peeks up, the frag grenade sends Naughty sky high. And now they have to focus on healing, but they've already positioned themselves into second place. It's a solid spot there. 
Heels in play. Furia with literally but an inkling of height available. We'll try to see what damage they can do to GKS before they themselves are forced to drop down. Great cracks from his Watson and Afar. They could be potentially the nails in the GKS coffin. If, well, maybe they don't turn towards Luminosity first. No, that is absolutely oh. disgusting. Meanwhile, DNO cleans house of GKS stopping them in their tracks. But for Luminosity, a Furia drops down. The final two occur. Watson gets decimated. And now Keon, the lone member of Furia, has to clutch this up. He barricades forward. And Furia, take your final game of match day number five. I came into today searching for it, searching for a Furia return in some way. And I said at some point, given their performance and how they've been fighting things out, this is a team that deserves to win, choking out DNO and taking away that God spot, even though they had the Watson, everything in more was absolutely perfect when we talk about the control of zone. The fact that DNO was even able to escape and survive as long as they did with Furia just on the outskirts of their doors. And thinking back, Furia was in seventh place ahead of the final match of the day. So we have to be seeing, like, where, where do they end up now? Because Legacy fell pretty early on. Yep. Moist fell pretty early on. Did they do enough to cover the distance? I'll tell you what, it's not just them we'll be wondering about with GKS making it up into that top four there. We have to question whether or not that was enough points to potentially usurp Moist in their final moments. I personally do not think so, especially as coming on fourth off of that drop is probably the worst of all their placements they could have hoped for in the end, even with the minor height. It was that perfect pull for fury that gave them the opportunity to really lay in and punish them from afar let's go ahead and pull up those match six results and see just how much work they were able to do Furia, nine eliminations with a 12 placement points gives them a 21 point game luminosity and dno walk away with just above 10 but you made the right call out zephyr gks end the day with another double digit elimination, 16 point game. You can't say that coming into this game six, they didn't try, especially after seeing them get aggressive towards the north side against Oblivion early on in every single other further fight. The win was on the mind from the get go. Had we saw that pull just tail in towards the other angle of this final round six we could have been potentially talking about a very very different winner not just potentially for this match but maybe even the day as a whole tsm finished that game in fifth place and exit grabbing a couple points alongside oxygen esports let's jump on over to that second page and see if we have any outliers yes legacy despite having such a priority towards that zone only walk away with five eliminations unable to regain after those bouts against fury let's go ahead and get glitter back because it's been a dynamic day and we need glitter we need more glitter in our it's life true. <laughs> listen that was a really solid way to close out the day we saw the resurgence of some of these teams that struggled a little bit on the first half and to the credit of gks they literally almost topped out our leaderboard towards the end of that i mean they really brought it back in the last two world's edge matches we got a little bit of everything here today we'll take a look back at our final circles take one final walk through all of the chaos that we saw that happened on world's edge going back all the way to match four tip this one was so much fun because we watched three different sets of duos have to fight on the edge of the zone it came down to furia and gks legacy decides to push across the way and just clean everybody up I love that we go back far enough on this zone to be able to see Legacy wrap around the back of Furia, set their sights on TSM, make a play at the same time for the truck here against DNO. And despite everything that they threw at them, Legacy finish up their fight against Furia quick enough to be able to drop down, clean up the remnants of TSM, grab the shield swaps, and set their sights on to DNO. A well-timed Radiant transfer for Yaguares is able to keep him up to speed for the shields and play this high ground of the RV to perfection. In the end, Dupe 
tried to do what he could inside, but Legacy made sure to close that out, taking home the first of each map here today. And then moving into match number five, we watched Moist kind of be stuck on the outskirts of this end zone here, Zephyr. But once again, GKS in the top, pulls the whole thing out. Yeah, this one was just absurd because before this moment, GKS really pressured by Native and Moist in that cart, which I'm sure anyone can tell you can sometimes be an absolute recipe for disaster. Do you know they bide their time with a bit of a, a catalyst wall down here as on the ops to end GKS clean things up. And when I say they clean things up, it is more than sufficient. It is almost absolutely perfect because it has to be here. As Dino's wall comes down, the turnaround with the Prowler from Stay Naughty in hand is enough to drop not one, but two here. And in that final 1v1, when it comes down to the knockdown dropout shield fight in the end, GKS, as pressured as they were, come with the win. I mean, DNO, another team that really turned it up once we got onto World's Edge as well. But then in the final match of the day, Furia just had some phenomenal positioning above everyone that was on that low ground. Some really good sight lines as well. And they were able to wait this out beautifully, Tiff, to clean it up. Yeah, but just ahead of this final circle for Furia alone, you have to think about all the rotations that they made to wrap around the back of launch site. And with a multitude of third parties, they were essentially gifted a free reset and waltz right onto this platform on the outskirts of DNO. And with his Watsons tracking with this 30 30, putting so much pressure onto GKS and then turning the tide straight onto Luminosity, it was so hard for a lot of our teams throughout the low ground to reset because his Watson was just being an absolute menace. I mean, a really, really nice way to close out the day. We watched the drop down on behalf of Furia. Nox are getting traded back and forth, and in the end, it's Keon who's able to clutch up for the squad, closing out the day with a win, which means now we can take a look at our series results here for the day. And just holding on to that leadership spot, Moist with 62 points here, Zephyr. What a day for them. In the end, it was still so close here. GKS, like we said, even if they don't come out with the win, you can't say they weren't trying. Only six points behind with Legacy are double winners coming into A and C, which is, mind you, one of our major sleeping giants making the resurgence that everybody has been waiting for. Yeah, and we'll take a look down the rest of this tip. There's definitely some names on the second page that I think we might be surprised by. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? You immediately look towards names like TSM in 11th place. After the prior showing and the original match day number two, they were in sixth place, so slipped a few positions, but it allowed teams like Xset to go from 17th overall on match day number two to seventh. So definitely moving on the right trajectory, disguised finishing sixth overall for the day, which is on par with their fifth place position on match day number two. Furia pretty consistent around that as well. But some of the sleeping giants like Sentinels were still waiting for them to wake up a little bit further. And honestly, even over sleepers who, you know, they woke up for this match day. They finished <laughs> 20th on match day number two and we're moving in the right direction for them. I love it. I love it. I mean, we saw lots of variety when it comes to these uptick in performances across the board here today but let's start talking about individual players and who has potentially earned that title of mvp and i feel like genome should be here for this he would be so happy if he were but this time around it's got to be waltzy okay we've talked about moist all day and honestly we probably could have picked anybody for moist because that's just how good they were on the whole not only picking up their performance on storm point in comparison to what we saw last time around when these two groups went up against each other but also then continuing that level of consistency onto world's edge suffice to say this team has absolutely 
absolutely found their footing here in NA. But when we're talking specifically about Waltzy, his Horizon today was not only doing an amazing job of bringing the mobility and the utility here to the team, but his slaying was insane okay heading into match six you guys saw it when the the kills leaderboard came up he was tied for most kills in the lobby and that would have been out of the 33 kills that moist had had on the day look at this over 6500 damage coming out of waltzy and that's literally essentially not really being able to play in the last match because they went out early and he was the first one down. That type of a performance absolutely is deserving of the MVP title. And like I said, I feel like I should have gotten Genome here for this ever. I feel like if you, he's not here at some point, whether he's asleep or potentially awake, he'll be on Twitter. And if we had the magic to find that tweet here, I know for a fact he'll be <laughs> singing the praises of, quote unquote, the APAC South and their dominance when it comes to North America. Okay, well, if he can't be here to sing their praises, we will do it for him. We have Waltzy standing by, ready to do an interview with us after a phenomenal performance on the day. Let's bring him in, ask him some questions about how he's feeling. Waltzy, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? No, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very good right now. I would expect so. I mean, you guys were almost untouchable here today. Obviously, you were our MVP as well because as an individual, you absolutely crushed it. Talk to me about your performance here today. Did you change anything from last week? I mean, you guys just looked so untouchable. Uh, I mean, we played we played Edge um, and we went more stacks, so that was like a big uh, adjustment, but we were also uncontested today, so uncontested in mm. first kind of, I think, speaks for itself. Uh, but yeah, I'd say mainly just playing edge and like just playing with confidence was like our big, our big change up for today. Playing with confidence was your oh, change up for the day. I thought you guys were always confident. What do you mean? Just a added amount of confidence, I guess, is a better way to put it. We Perfect. we do play with confidence, but uh, I mean, if if you saw a couple of the plays that we were making, they're a bit. Uh, I guess foreign for us, we don't usually take uh, edge fights and like look to force things. We usually sort of play zone, let things come to us. But today we just decided to take what was ours, I guess. Okay, well, it paid off because you got the match day win. Now, we have to always ask this question. Now that we've got you here on the main stage, congratulations on being MVP. You made the move from APAC South over to North America following kind of what Dark Zero had done. How would you rate the journey from split one so far for you guys? Uh, I would say it is a roller coaster, to be honest. Um, <laughs> going to like a new region, having to learn the playstyle, and also having to fight for the last three months for a POI has been definitely mentally uh, challenging, I guess, like just, just straining. But I think, you know, looking at us today and how much effort we've put in kind of just spoke for itself. Well, I'll tell you what, the effort has finally come true for a man like yourself. And of course, I know you as well as your teammates are happy to represent Moist in first for the very first time. I want to get yeah. your impressions on some of the other teams around the bend. Obviously, you've matched up into that contest against Legacy for quite some time. But is there anyone else who has particularly stood the test of the Moist boys when it comes to North America? Uh, I mean, there, there's just, I mean... And I just being the best region, there's obviously just a lot of talent. So I could I could probably mention almost all teams, but um, I would say, obviously Legacy. Um, you know we've we've been contesting for two months, and that con has not gone really either way. It's just been a hard fifty fifty on who's going to win it. Um, and then besides that, uh, obviously DZ being, you know, first overall. Um, even after we've won today, kind of just speaks for itself. Even though they are technically another Apex South team, so two top. Uh, the top two teams right now being Apex out is kind of good as well. Just thought I'd mention that uh, just because that's something that we're definitely proud of. But, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Would and then do. besides that, <laughs> definitely. Besides that, I would say, uh, honestly, probably Exit, uh, like one of one of my other sort of oh. favorite teams slash very good players. I have a lot of respect for those guys. 
All right, now, Waltzy, we've been asking this question of everybody today because it's coming into play right around the corner. Obviously, Season 20 is going to be changing a lot of things once that patch goes into effect. And I kind of want to get your thoughts on it. Obviously, we don't know everything and how it's all going to play out. But from the limited information that you do have, what type of predictions do you have for how it might affect the competitive meta? Or what are you looking forward to? Uh, I mean, armor changes... Armor changes makes me a little bit worried, I guess. I've I like just, you know, only only being able to find whites on the floor, I guess, is just something that's kind of uh kind of interesting because, you know, when we you landed a PY like Echo and you're coming out with double perp blue or something like that, it's uh it's gonna be very interesting, especially because I've heard that uh to get Evo comes down to like how much PvE you have around you. So not having a lot around Echo is gonna be like very interesting. But I would say the changes look interesting, but I don't really have like an opinion on how that's going to play out. It's it's something that I'll have to wait and sort of play out to really have a feel for. All right. Well, we'll have to see how it all shakes out. Waltzy, thank you so much for jumping on and chatting with us. We appreciate it. And congratulations again on a stellar performance today. No, thank you for having me. All right. We get an opportunity here to now see our regular standings where everybody is. I mean, you mentioned them, DZ up there, 64 points, followed by LG. This is a stacked top of the leaderboard right now, Tiff. What's stacked is Dark Zero's on top with only three <laughs> series played alongside Moist now. So I think that was a really cool moment for Waltzy to just be like, look, APAC South team's doing work over here. TSM still looking poised despite having a little bit of a fall off here for match day number five. I have no doubt that the boys are cooking and ready to show out for those season 20 changes. All right, we'll continue on down here to the second page of our regular season standings. A couple of these teams really showed up today too, Zephyr. Oh, absolutely. From DNO, especially on my end, to, of course, Legacy. Finally, what teams have been expecting now, just on the cusp of potentially hosting themselves, what could be a land spot? This is a team that previously we were talking about literally one point away from being relegated after their first two match days. So their return is something that is, well, yes, something we continue to at least bring up, is nice to finally see pop. Absolutely, and you can see just how close the points are there in the middle. And as we take a look at the last page here, a lot of names that we saw are now up, moved into that middle page. Even Sentinels have kind of scooched up just a little bit, keeping themselves towards the top of here. Uh, these teams, though, are definitely going to be putting in some time uh, in this mid-season break, I guess, if you will, trying to work things out for the second half of the season and see what they can do when it comes to earning some more points and moving their way up the leaderboard as we continue to make our way through the season. I can't believe we're even saying that already, but another day done and dusted. So, Tiff, I want to start with you. Give me your thoughts um, on how NA went because it, it was a fun day. NA was a cluster. That's all I have to say. <laughs> These zones have been crazy. Teams are starting to wake up and show out. But this is the end of split one as we know it. Just a few weeks to go before we see what that inevitable season 20 change will hold for all of our pro players. Scrims are going to be wild, so make sure you tune in and keep your eyes apprised on them. Greek for EMEA, Nicewig always throwing down the North American watch parties to be able to see what these teams will be doing in terms of limit testing. Watsy himself said it. Hey, the, I'm a little scared about the Evo changes, especially knowing there's not going to be too many opportunities to level those up. So we'll have to keep an eye out because February 13th is coming up quick. Yeah, there's going to be so much stuff for all of our players to be keeping track of. Zephyr, I want to get your final thoughts on the day as well. And then I guess what you're looking forward to next time we're back here doing this all over again. Yeah, I'll tell you what, today was a blessing of a farewell to ALGS as we currently know it. Everything and more will continue to change on. So even for those teams like Moist, who top out on the day of, or our usual suspects between Luminosity, TSM, or even the constant shifting and changing of so many of these other teams, nothing is set in stone. 
course, when we reappear here. The thing I'm most interested and entertained to see is what I will call the split of coaches here. The best of the best coaches around the block in North America are going to come together or at least come together with their teams in their own ways to push the limits of what we know is competitive Apex. I love that, Zephyr. That's a fantastic point to make. For now, it's time for us to say goodbye to Tiff and Zephyr. You guys crushed it yet again, as you always do. So, so good at your jobs. Because it's time for us to say goodbye to the rest of the show. Now, obviously, we might be done here at NA right now. But like we mentioned before, the split still has tons of time left. We've got a little bit of a mid-season break now. But we will be back here March 2nd. Okay, we'll continue on with all the ALGS action then. So make sure you're tuning back in then to see how this split continues to play out. Especially after all of that season 20 action. I don't even know if anything we know to be true right now will be relevant. Come the next time we see each other in our next match day we're going to see our heavy hitters teams that have been performing so so well here so far obviously oxg tsm furia moist we saw pop-up performances from so many squads today that what we saw at the top of our leaderboard is just a fraction of what we anticipate we will see in the coming weeks to close out the entire season i hope that you are all ready for it but speaking of upcoming apex action this isn't the only thing that we have in store for you guys okay we also have the apex legends asia festival coming up right around the corner and it is one of the largest offline events for apex legends in asia well if you don't know what i'm talking about we've got a little trailer to show you that breaks it all down so let's check it out to watch teams like TSM, Alliance, various ALGS pros, and of course, prominent creators from across China, Japan, and Korea. The event will even feature a live music performance of the song, Only One King, which you would know because it was featured in the Apex Legends season two trailer. But of course, if you can't make it, you can always tune in on Twitch and you can earn those Twitch drop items while you do that. The coverage will be on twitch.tv forward slash esports underscore rage as well as the legends wig and greek having those english watch parties over on their channels so lots of opportunities for you guys to catch up with all of that apex legends action as always you can catch us on at play apex esports on x and youtube for any and all updates related to anything else you want to know about what we've got going on here in the ALGS. But for now, it's time for us to say goodbye. We'll be back very, very soon. Like I said, don't forget, we're heading into that mid-season break. ALGS will resume on March 2nd, same place, as we continue our Apex Legends action. Make sure you mark your calendars. We'll see you then. Difficult rotation. Need one. He's just shooting and it's working. Don't rotate, don't rotate. I'm, I'm rotating, I'm rotating. 
Suited and booted, I'm ready for war. Put the battle to the floor. Heavy metal in the background. You should know I don't back down. But when it's go time, oh, it's no time. Tell them, go and cut the core. And they just keep telling me more. They, 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 they keep on telling me more. I'm a monster, son of a fire.